voice for Expo Baseball in the Capital District is WHRL. Game time is coming up next with the pregame show. Stay tuned for Expo Baseball on WHRL, Albany, New York. It wasn't a dream. We won our opening game by the score of 11 to 10 over the New York Mets yesterday. As the pitchers uh, really got belted around by the hitters, the hitters taking over for one game only so far. Quite a contrast uh, from yesterday's opening day here at Shea Stadium. The color guards are gone. The dignitaries have returned to their offices. And most of yesterday's 45,000 fans are back at their desk. Still uh, quite a crowd here at Shea Stadium this afternoon, just the same. The skies are clear. The temperature is in the mid-60s. Well, we have uh, quite a pregame show lined up for you, including one of the stars of yesterday's ball game, Rusty Staub. So, it's my great pleasure to bring in my partner here on the play-by-play -play broadcast, Dave Van Horn. Well, thank you, Russ, and hi, everybody. A very pleasant good afternoon to you. It is a very pleasant day. Sun is shining. There's a bit of a breeze going from right to left across the field and a little bit cooler than it was yesterday. We had a high yesterday afternoon of some 66 degrees. Don't believe it'll uh, get quite up to 66 today, but the temperature should reach uh, somewhere between uh, 57, 58 degrees, maybe up to 60 before the afternoon is over. Jim McAndrew will be pitching for the New York Mets today. McAndrew was 4-7 and seven with the Mets last year, and with Jacksonville in the International League, he won eight and lost three. Jim McAndrew, a right-hander, going against the Expos right-hander, Bill Stoneman. Bill came to the Expos from the Chicago Cubs organization. He was involved in three decisions in 1968. He lost one with the Cubs and two with Tacoma of the Pacific Coast League. He is two and five lifetime in the major leagues. And against the New York Mets, the year before last, Stoneman had one decision that was a loss. So he'll be looking to uh, beat the Mets this afternoon. And of course, Gene Mock's very anxious uh, for Bill Stoneman to establish himself as a starting pitcher in the Montreal rotation. So this should be another dandy. We had a great one yesterday, winning 11 to 10. And now this afternoon, a couple of right-handers square off Jim McAndrew and Bill Stoneman. And by golly, all of the expansion clubs have won. Uh, we beat the Mets here. Uh, San Diego beat Houston 2-1. to one. Kansas City beat Minnesota 4-3. to three. So uh, Seattle won over California by the same 4-3 count. So this uh, was quite an opening day yesterday for the expansion clubs. And a quick look at the Eastern Division of the National League, which Montreal is a member, Chicago, Montreal, and Pittsburgh, all with victories, and the Mets, Philadelphia, and St. Louis with losses. Those St. Louis Cardinals will be coming into Jerry Park, as you well know, the first of the week for a two-game stand to open the season at Jerry Park. Well, as Russ mentioned, uh, we have a couple of guests. Uh, first off, we're going to be talking with Rusty Staub, and then we'll also talk with Expos catcher John Bateman. We'll meet today's guest, Rusty Staub, after this message. Students, today, students, as loyal cigarette smokers, let's discuss certain little drawbacks we all have to face. For instance... Of course, cigarette smoking causes lung cancer and heart disease. The doctors don't have to keep harping on that. We all know that. And we all know that cigarettes aren't the only troublemakers either. <laughs> For example, I know a man who broke his back merely bending over to tie a shoelace. But do you hear the doctors telling us to give up wearing shoes? Of course not. 
And they go on and on about how cigarettes cause shortness of breath, putting an added burden on the heart. Well, I say the heart was put there to work, and it had just better get to work or get out. Now then, let's all light up and enjoy a good smoke. For more on cigarette smoking, call your American Cancer Society. Well, standing by with his uh, pre-game guest, the Rusty Staub, here is Dave Van Horn. Rusty, first of all, congratulations on that first game yesterday. Well, thank you, Dave. It was... Um... You know, one of the more exciting ones I've had the pleasure of being a part of, and uh, I was real glad the people, you know, in Montreal got to at least see uh, a pretty exciting one. We didn't want to make it so exciting at the end, but that's the way it worked out. You told me after the ball game that was the first opening day home run you hit. Oh, yeah, I've, I'm not, you know, a real productive home run hitter. I haven't been in the past, and uh, that's definitely the first time I've ever hit one on opening day. Well, let's talk about that hit, because I know uh, whether you're a home run hitter or not, you like to talk about the long balls. Uh, what did you hit? Well, um, Alvin Jackson just, he hung a curveball is what he did, and, I, and that's the pitch I hit. It was a high curveball. Were you going for the long ball, or were you just going for that base hitter and try to get it to the power alley? Well, actually, I was, you know, he's a, a left-handed pitcher, and he's a, a junk ball pitcher, throws a lot of breaking balls, and he, um, you know, I've, the only way I've had any success with him at all is to try to hit him the other way, and I was, you know, at the plate with the idea in mind of hitting him to, you know, left field or up the middle, and uh, so I wouldn't, you know, pull out. And, you know, that's what I try to explain to people about hitting. The more you try for the home run, the less you have a chance to do it. And the majority of the home runs you, you, you do hit, uh, you, you're not really trying to hit the home run. And um, I was trying to hit that ball to left center and, uh, you know, I hit the ball to right center and out of the park. Not a bad mistake. Well, it's not that it's a mistake. It's right. just the idea is that you, uh, you know, re you react to the bad pitch. And uh, if you get a good pitch, you're not going to hit it out anyway. Rusty, I know the last week of spring training that I was with the ball club, several times after watching you come out of the batting cage, um, you had a look of frustration on your face. Uh, I remember hearing you a couple of times around the cage saying something just doesn't feel right. Uh, what was the problem that last week? Had you had it all, uh, all spring, or have you just started now to feel right? Well, what actually took place was... Um, for a while there, one week, about a week before the season started, uh, I hit the ball tremendously. And uh, But I was spread wider than I've ever been spread before in my life, just like I was yesterday. And uh, it wasn't the way I've hit. And I, and I kept trying to find the old stance, and I couldn't find it. And that's what you know I was concerned about, because uh, I really have never had the wide stance that I have right now. But I guess you just have to adjust a little bit. And this year, I feel real comfortable in the wide stance. And I was trying to find the other one. It just I couldn't find it, so I went with what I had. And what you mean by saying that you couldn't find it is this just you couldn't feel comfortable any way but the way you were standing by widening that stance and you knew that that had been up to that point unnatural for you. Right. You know, in the past I have a, had a relatively closed stance as far as, I mean, how far, how far apart my feet are. But uh, this year they're pretty wide apart and uh, the other way I just, you know, I kept over striding and uh, lunging is the terminology that we use uh, at the ball and uh, I couldn't stop it, you know, with the, with the, with the short stance and uh, so I had to spread out. Well, Rusty, uh, now that the season has gotten underway, one game uh, gone, we, we can't talk a great deal about pitching. I think anybody who looks at the figures on that game yesterday is going to know that uh, everybody that went out to that mound yesterday had their problems. Even uh, our own Don Shaw, who I thought had the best stuff of the day, even got himself in trouble there in the ninth inning. But um, how about the uh, this band you're going to face today? Uh, I think I've faced him one or two times so far, and he's just a good major league pitcher. He keeps the ball down. He's got pretty good control. And, uh, he has had pretty good success up here so far, the little bit of time he's pitched up here. And uh, he's just a real competent major league pitcher, and we're going to have to do a heck of a job against him to beat him. Well, Rusty, let's hope for continued success for the Expos and for Rusty Stop. Well, I thank you. We're going to try to give you something, uh, you know, talk about a lot. That's Rusty Stop star right fielder of the Montreal Expos. We'll continue our talk as we turn to John Bateman. And John, first of all, uh, 
congratulations are in store for uh, that ball game yesterday. Quite a historic game, and I imagine it had to be an exciting one to play in. Well, that's uh, probably the most exciting game I've been in. Uh, uh, I've been uh, in the league now for almost seven years, and I've never been as, uh, as nervous or excited before a ball game as I was that one yesterday. Uh, let me ask you this. You were behind the plate. You had to look at that stuff coming in there yesterday. What were your feelings in the ninth inning? Well, really, when, when you go in the ninth inning with a five-run lead, uh, uh, you feel pretty safe, and then all of a sudden uh, you got a one-run lead and you got runners on first and second. It was just a little hard to believe, but... Uh, Carol Sambera made uh, three real good pitches to uh, gas for the right fielder and struck him out. And uh, uh, that was a, a real relief when I saw him miss that third pitch. It looked like uh, we were going to have a, well, we did have a hard time ending that game because so many, a uh, couple of times there in the ninth, we were within one pitch of, uh, of ending it all. Right, we uh, we had a chance, and then Cleon Jones hits a little ball up the middle, and, uh, and then we have a chance for a double play, uh, and... Uh, and then the catcher comes up and hits a home run. So we're just one pitch away. It seemed like it took us a long time to get that last out. John, uh, in the first couple of innings yesterday, I don't ever remember seeing a game with as many balls hit up the middle on the ground. Uh, what was happening out there? Well, they were just, uh, uh, Mudcat uh, was having a tough time with getting his uh, curveball down. And uh, Tommy Agee hit a ball up the middle, and uh, and then the second hitter tried to hit the ball up the middle. Just lucky they had to hit and run on it. We, we stopped that from being a base hit. And, uh, uh, Looks like all of these hitters are just trying to go up the middle. I believe that uh, everybody's just trying to go up the middle in the right field and, uh, and forget the home runs. Someone made the comment after the game that uh, Mudcat probably won't have another day like that the rest of the year. Uh, you said it was uh, trouble with his curveball. Was that it? He, he had a real good fastball yesterday. It was probably as good a fastball as he's had uh, had all year or all spring. And uh, and then he can't, he just couldn't get his curveball down. He threw a threw a hanging curveball at Jerry Grody. Got a base hit on him. He just couldn't get it down. And uh, he just can't pitch with one pitch. I made the comment yesterday that Gene Mock had told me that uh, he felt John Bateman was one of the fine hit and run men uh, that we had on this ball club. Uh, made a beautiful play yesterday. Uh, You've been willing to sacrifice that power and, and go for those base hits. Well, uh, that's uh, that's the way I'm going to hit. Uh, I have to give most credit to that to Harry Walker. He taught me to go the other way, and uh, and that's why the way I'm going to try to hit all year. And uh, yesterday it worked real good. It kept us out with double play, and then Coco the boy hit the home run. We got three runs. That's catcher John Bateman, our other guest on our pregame show. We'll take a look at the starting lineup after this final message. Half of the fight against MS, multiple sclerosis, the great crippler of young adults, here is Frank Sinatra. Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you, if you're young at heart. It's pretty hard to believe in fairy tales if you live in a wheelchair. For victims of MS, multiple sclerosis, it must seem that stories with fairy tale endings are for other people, not them. MS is the great crippler of young adults. It blocks or scrambles nerve messages that let a man walk, talk, see, even move. A father can't earn a living in a wheelchair. A pretty girl is never asked to a dance. There's no cure yet, but there's hope through research sponsored by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. When the MS volunteer calls, please give generously. Thank you. And now back to Expo Baseball. All right, it'll be right-hander Bill Stoneman against Jim McAndrew in this one, getting underway in a couple of minutes. And uh, all of the starters that started the game will be in there for both teams again today. Russ will give you the lineup in just a moment. Right now, stay tuned for Expos Baseball. High school seniors. What? Hello, this is Lucille Ball. Remember all the cowboy movies you've seen where the good guys wore white hats and the bad guys wore black? It was easy then to tell the villains and the heroes apart. But in real life, it's not so easy. Why, for example, do the cells or organs in one body work well while in another they cause serious problems? Why does one baby come into the world with a strong body and sound mind while another is born handicapped, a victim of birth defects? These vital questions are the focal point of the March of Dimes fight against birth defects. And these questions must be answered. 
because 250,000 children in this country alone are born every year with birth defects. The March of Dimes programs of medical care, scientific research, and public education are hard at work. But your help is needed, too, so please be generous. Give to the March of Dimes. Over WHRL Albany, we now return to Expo Baseball. Cycle happens at every Expo's game. Action on the field and good times for everybody. Fun and music before and during every game and a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned for your enjoyment at Jerry Park. There'll be ladies' days, camera days, teen nights, father and son nights, ball day, know your neighbor night, bat day, and chap day. You'll want to be sure to get with the big league happenings at every Expos game this season. Major League Baseball is here in a big way, and everybody's getting tickets now for Expos Baseball. They're on sale near you, and you can get yours in minutes. TRS computers do the work for you. Get the seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. Call 875-2300 for the computer or ticket office nearest you. The best buy for your entertainment dollar is Expos Baseball, all season long at Jerry Park. Public transportation to the stadium and several adjoining parking lots for your automobile. Well, let's take a look at the starting batting lineup for the Montreal Expo. The leadoff man will be Maury Will. He's batting number one and playing shortstop. In the second position, playing second base, Gary Sutherland. Batting third, Rusty Staub. Staub playing in right field. The cleanup man this afternoon against right-handed pitching will be the left-hand hitter, Mac Jones. Mac Jones in cleanup. Batting number five for the Expos and playing first base, Bob Staley. Batting number six for Montreal and uh, catching John Bateman. Seventh in the batting order, the third baseman, Jose Coco Lavoy. Eighth in the order, center fielder Don Hahn. And the ninth man, pitcher Bill Stoneman. For the New York Mets this afternoon, in center field and leading off, Tommy Agee. Batting number two for the Mets, Rod Gaspar, the right fielder. Third man up in the batting order will be Ken Boswell, the second baseman. Cleanup man this afternoon, Cleon Jones of the Mets. And it's very interesting to note that both left fielders in today's game are named Jones, and both are in the cleanup spot. Ed Charles will be batting fifth for New York, playing third base. Batting sixth will be Ed Cranepool, the first baseman. Jerry Grody will be the catcher, and Grody will be followed by Bud Harrelson, the shortstop. Harrelson, who made that magnificent play, by far the best play of the afternoon in yesterday's ball game here at Shea Stadium. Batting ninth will be the pitcher, Jim McAndrew. As we mentioned at the outset, a beautiful day for baseball. A little cool in the shadows of Shea Stadium, but the sun right now is just bathing the, the fans on both sides of the line and up in the upper deck. The umpires are down at uh, home plate discussing the ground rules uh, with the uh, managers, Gil Hodges of the New York Mets and Gene Mock of the Montreal Expos. We'll take this opportunity to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. And this is WHRL in Albany with Expo Baseball and 24 hours of stereo programming daily. The umpires for this afternoon's game, veteran Stan Landis behind the plate. Bill Williams will be at first base, Nick Colosi at second, and Tom Gorman at third base. Once again about Shea Stadium here in the Flushing, New York, on the dimensions, 341 down the foul line, then it cuts deeply to 358 in uh, mild right field. In uh, medium right center, it's 371, the power rally is 396, to the flagpole in center field, 410 feet. The power rally in left field, 396 feet, 371 to medium right field, 358 and 341 down the line here at Shea Stadium. Well, the Expos, needless to say, were extremely happy over their victory yesterday, 11 to 10. We went down into the uh, Expos clubhouse following the game. 
manager Gene Mark uh, said to both uh, Dave Van Horn and myself, how about that one for a starting baseball broadcast? And, uh, of course, our reply was, make sure you come up with a few more before we get back home in Montreal Sunday night. The Expos will uh, finish off their series here at Shea Stadium tomorrow afternoon against the Mets. Then we'll all go to Chicago for a three-game series against the Cubs of Leo DeRocher, and that should be an interesting one indeed to see. The Cubs are picked as one of the top contending clubs in the Eastern Division of the National League this year. Following the three-game series with the Chicago Cubs, the team comes back Sunday night, and on Monday, the big opening day, another historic moment for uh, Canadian baseball fans and certainly baseball fans in the northeastern United States, all those within driving distance of Montreal because everyone will want to be at Jerry Park for the curtain raiser. Certainly a day all of them will remember for a long, long time. The uh, players are now out in their defensive positions, the New York Mets, and we're all set for the national anthem.
to the hard luck boy of the staff in 68. And the Mets were shut out in his first four starts and in five of his seven defeats. Here's a strike fired by McAndrew. One ball, two strikes. Damari Wills. Outfield drawn in and straight away for Wills. Switch hitter batting left against the right-hander. Jim McAndrew. What a great day here yesterday for the Expos fans, and there were a lot on hand. Several came down for the series. Ground ball to the second baseman. Boswell scoops it up, throws over to first, and Wills is retired. One down. That'll bring Gary Sutherland to the plate. Sutherland, hitless yesterday. Most uh, baseball people thought this was a real steal for the Expos in getting Gary Sutherland from the Philadelphia Phillies. Fine hitter batting number two behind Wills. Here's the first pitch to the right-hand hitter. And a strike is called as the fastball hit the inside corner. Strike one. We're just underway. On deck is Rusty Staub. Peanuts Lowry in the third base coaching box. Bob Oldest in the first base box for the Expos. McAndrew delivers. Pitch is swung on. Looper down the right field line. Curving foul and into the box seat. Gaspar gave chase but would not have been able to make a play on the ball. Andrew is out in front, 0-2. The wind has been gusty, blowing all around here. At the moment, coming in toward the plate. Up and the pitch. Swing and a foul back into the screen behind the plate. For Sutherland, the outfield drifts around a few steps to the right side. Looking for Gary to push that ball to the opposite field. Second baseman Boswell back on the edge of the grass. Here's the wind up and the pitch. Curveball is swung on and the bounder goes to the third baseman. Ed Charles makes the throw. It's in time. And Sutherland is out. Two up and two down. And stepping in is Rusty Staub. Two for three. A home run and two RBIs. Got walked three times yesterday. First time was an intentional walk. Issued to Staub by Tom Seavers. Two down, nobody on for this left-hand hitter. The pitch. Right down the middle. Strike call. They really overshift to the right side for stop. McAndrews low with his next offering. One ball and one strike. fielder Tommy Agee way around in that right center power alley for Rusty. Here's the fastball swung on, hammered out toward left center. It's going to drop in there and go to the wall. Giving chase is Cleon Jones. Staub is digging for two and he'll hold up at second base with a stand-up double for Rusty Staub. So with two outs, Staub doubles to left center. In that big gap that they left there, Jones had given Staub field line, but he wasn't that far over protecting toward left center. And as we mentioned, A.G., the center fielder, was way around to right center. So here is Mac Jones, another left-hand hitter. Mac, two for four yesterday. A couple of doubles and two RBIs. McAndrew takes a look at Staub. Here's the pitch. Swung on and popped up. To the shortstop, Harrelson moves under it, makes the catch, and the inning's over. So that's all for the Expos here in the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. The score, 
After the top half of the first, the Expos nothing, and the Mets coming to bat. Major League Baseball is here. The brand new Expos take on all the famous National League stars. There'll be special fun days, music, entertainment, and excitement will happen every minute at every game. Action on the field and good times for everybody. Fun and music before and during every game. And a whole cavalcade of special nights. And nights are being planned throughout the season. So get with the big league happenings at every Expos game. Everybody's getting tickets for Expos baseball. The big question is, what happens this weekend when the Montreal Expos return home? They open Monday at Jerry Park. The situation is this, the Expo ticket office will be open from 8.30 in the morning until 6, Saturday and Sunday for those wishing to purchase season tickets. The bleacher seats will be available on Monday. 1,000 bleacher seats will go on sale on Monday at Jerry Park. So try to make a date uh, to see Expo Baseball this year. If you can't get tickets for the opening game, it is a sellout. Uh, with the exception of those bleacher seats, make sure you take in some of the action this year. Well, as we move into the bottom half of the first inning, no score. The Expos picking up just one hit of that long double by Rusty Stout in the power alley in left center field. First man up for the New York Mets this afternoon, the leadoff man, right-hand hitter Tommy Agee. Here again is Dave Van Horn. Bill Stoneman out on the mound, taking his warm-ups. Stoney did not uh, have any decisions against the New York Mets last year. The year before, as we mentioned, he had one decision against them, and that was a loss. Right-hander Bill Stoneman. Now stepping in is the leadoff batter, Tommy Agee. He'll be followed by Rod Gaspar and Kenny Boswell. A.G.'s a right-hand hitter. Stoneman has the sign from Bateman. The wind-up in the pitch, a fastball. Down low and inside, ball one. A.G. yesterday was two for four and had three RBIs. Walked twice, doubled. sensation left hand hitter took a breaking ball for a strike 0 and 1 
Gaspar yesterday went two for five and drove in a run. Outfield is around to the right. Here's the pitch from Stoneman. Strike two called. And Gaspar is behind. Oh and two. He's in trouble now. Stoney have a chance to work on him a little bit and not give him anything to hit. Gaspar has an open stance. He opens up toward the pitcher, swings and fouls one off the right side. First base coach Yogi Berra going down to retrieve the ball. Eddie Yost in the third base box. Manager Gil Hodges looking fit in spite of the fact that he's just now getting over a little virus infection. No score in this one. We're in the bottom of the first. Pitch is low and inside. To Rod Gaspar, one ball, two strikes. Rusty stop, deep straight away, right field. Don Hahn. Came in a little bit, moved around toward right center. Mac Jones way in in left field and around toward the left center power alley. Here's the pitch, and it's a swing and a foul. Back to the screen behind the plate. The count remains one ball and two strikes with one out and nobody on. One other game this afternoon in the National League, Philadelphia and Chicago. Everybody else is playing tonight. Here's the wind up by Stoneman, the curveball hung up outside. Two and two, the count. Los Angeles will be at Cincinnati tonight, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, San Francisco at Atlanta, and Houston at San Diego. This is game number two of a three game series here at Shea Stadium with the Mets. Pitch high and outside, ball three. So after getting out in front, 0 oh and two. Stoneman has worked to a full count now on Rod Gaspar. Three balls and two strikes. Second baseman, Gary Sutherland, a step back on the edge of the grass. Bailey protecting the line back behind first base. Stoneman looks down to Bateman for the sign. Rocks into motion. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back in the air. 3-2. be in Chicago. We'll see Rich Nye. Going against uh, Carl Morton. There could be a change. Larry Jaster scheduled to go here tomorrow against Gary Gentry, but it could be Carl Morton. They may switch those two days around. Here's pitch low and inside. Ball four, and Gaspar draws a walk. With one out, the Mets get a runner aboard. Rod Gaspar on at first, and the batter is Ken Boswell, the second baseman. Boswell yesterday went two for five and drove in a run. Struck out twice, had a rough day in the field, committing three errors. Left-hand hitter, Ken Boswell. Second baseman of the Mets. Stoneman's pitch and it hit Boswell. He tried to get out of the way of it and he ducked down and it got him. So this is going to move Gaspar down to second base and Boswell just now getting up. Trainer Gus Fogg out to take a look at him. Walking with him up toward first base. Boswell moving very slowly. Gil Hodges has also come out and talked to him and Yogi Berra. Boswell made a quick move. I didn't see exactly where it hit him. It looked as though it hit him right in the back, Dave. It was a sharp breaking curve, inside curve, and he turned around and got him right in the back from what I can see. They're out there, perhaps the back or the side. Uh, Gil Hodge is out there, and he's all right. Uh, he's going to first base. Boswell is on first base. Uh, hit by pitcher Bill Stoneman. Uh, right after it happened, umpire Stan Landis called for the ball that Stoneman was throwing to examine it. Well, the runner now at first with 
is one out. The Mets have runners at first and second here in the bottom of the first. No score. And the batter, Cleon Jones, the right-hand hitter. And the fans start to chant, let's go Mets. Jones was three for five yesterday and drove in a run. Stoneman to the stretch, checks his lead runner, and here's the pitch. Curveball, strike call. 0-1 to Cleon Jones, the left fielder of the New York Mets. In the on-deck circle is the third baseman, Ed Charles. Jones, right-hand hitter, but they give him that left field line. Mac Jones swung around toward that left center power alley in left field. On, around. Sob straight away. Stoneman was low and outside with his next offering, and the count is a ball and a strike. Only one out. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a ground ball to the left side, through the hole out in the left field for a base hit, and Gaspar is coming home to score. Here's the throw, and it's going to be behind the runner, and the Mets lead one to nothing. Leon Jones comes up with an RBI single to left. To score, Rod Gaspar from second base. Boswell moved down to second. Jones now the runner at first. And here's Ed Charles, another right-hand hitter, veteran on this New York Mets ball club. Charles yesterday was one for four and picked up an RBI. Uh, let's see, did he pick up an RBI yesterday? He picked up a two. He looks at Boswell, the lead runner. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside and getting out of there is Ed Charles. Two balls and no strikes. Bill Stoneman now trying to work his way out of trouble here in the first inning. Boswell, the runner, is second. Jones at first. Ed Charles at the plate. Here's Stoneman's pitch. Fastball is wide. 3-0, and oh, the count. The infield is drawn in about midway. The outfield straightaway for Ed Charles. Stoneman holds at the belt and now delivers. third base. So runners at 
Bill Stoneman. Three runs are in. And those walks will really hurt you. And Stoney's issued a couple here in the inning. Here's Jerry Grody, the catcher now, with runners at first and second. Right-hand hitter lets the first one go low, ball one. Grody yesterday, two for three at the plate, scored three runs, drove one in. Drew a couple of walks. Stoneman to the stretch. And the pitch. Low, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Bill at the moment a little upset with himself out there. With one out, Gaspar walked, Boswell was hit by a pitch, and then Jones delivered, drove a run in, and then Crane pulls single, scored two more runs. Three-nothing Mets here in the bottom of the first. Fastball, strike call. Two and one the count. at first, not taking too much of a lead. Ed Charles, the runner at third base. Stoneman delivers. Pitch swung on, and a line drive down the right field line that goes foul. Well, that has the fans on their feet. It goes to strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Steve Shea continues to warm up in the Expo bullpen. hit the Expos 2-1 to one here in the first inning, leading 3-0. Stoneman, a look at the runners and the pitch. Breaking ball swung on, high fly down the left field line. Coming over for it is Mac Jones on the run. He can, he's going to let it go. It was just foul by a couple of feet, but Mac very smartly let it go so that Charles could not score. The ball was hit deep enough down the line that Charles could have tagged up and scored. Showed great speed yesterday afternoon, going all the way around a third on an infield on a on a, on a single. It was tremendous speed that he uh, displayed uh, on the base pass yesterday. So there's no point in taking any any chances with him this time. Mac would have been there to make the catch had it been a fair ball, but he let it go, seeing that it was foul just by a couple of feet over the line. Two two. Here comes the pitch. Curveball swung on and a base hit down the left field line. Scores easily. Mac Jones comes up with the ball. The throw will hold Crane Bull at third base. And it'll also check Brody at first. Let's take this opportunity to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. And this is WHRL in Albany with Expo Baseball and 24 hours of stereo programming daily. We now return to Expo Baseball. All right, Jerry Grody came up with an RBI single. Now, Bud Harrelson at the plate. The shortstop with Grody at first, Crane Bull at third. Timeout call for just a moment. Maury Wills came into the infield, over to the mound to talk to Bill Stoneman. Harrelson's a left-hand hitter. He was 0 for 1 yesterday and drew a couple of walks. A stretch by Stoneman, and the pitch is high. Ball one. One out. The infielders have circled the grass. LaVoy at third, right in on the edge of the grass, as is Wills at shortstop. Sutherland at second. Bailey checks the runner at first. Come in. That'll be it for Bill Stoneman. Well, it's been a long.
long afternoon for Bill Stallman, even though the game just started uh, about uh, 30 minutes ago. Stallman's having a tough uh, time with the New York Mets, and manager Gene Mock uh, figures that that's all the uh, tough time he'll have as he goes to his bullpen to bring in a reliever. Stallman uh, has given up uh, four runs on three hits in this uh, bottom half of the first inning as the Mets have taken a 4 to nothing lead over the Montreal Expos. The Expos have had only one hit in that first inning, that uh, long double to left center field by Rusty Starr. So the conference is on the hill. John Bateman is there with the pitcher, uh, Bill Stallman. Morty Wills is there, Bob Bailey also, and uh, manager Gene Mock, and we've got our new pitcher coming in. And he's not taking the golf car that they have in the bullpen to speed it up. Uh, Steve Shea is, play, is taking plenty of time, walking very slowly to the hill, and uh, this will give everyone all around uh, plenty of time to uh, relax. And Bill Stoneman now walks uh, across the third baseline, takes that long walk to the dugout, then through the uh, alleyway to the showers. Uh, kind of a tough uh, debut for Bill Stoneman. He just throws his glove on the bench as he goes down the dugout steps. And in comes Steve Shea, a big fellow, a big right-hander, and uh, the Expos must go to their bullpen early again today. Yesterday, we, it was like a shooting gallery uh, in Shea Stadium with a total, uh, total of 27 hits, 21 runs, and four home runs in yesterday's ball game. And here it is. The first inning isn't even over yet, and we've had four runs on three hits. Four hits all told and four runs. So now uh, Steve Shea is uh, taking his warm-up pitches uh, with catcher John Bateman. Gene Mock returns to the dugout and makes a few notations on his scorecard. And that's it for Bill Stoneman. Studying the uh, Montreal Expos defensively for you, it's uh, Mac Jones in left field, in case you've just joined us, Don Hahn in center, and Rusty Staub in right field. The infield has Jose Coppola-Boy at third base, Maury Wills at short, Gary Sutherland at second, and Bob Bailey at first. Wills came up with a sparkling play, a fantastic play, as a matter of fact, as he uh, as he robbed uh, Tommy Agee of what appeared to be a sure hit. As, uh, late, as Agee lined one through the box, Maury took a dive for it, face first on the sack at second base, came up with it, and still managed to get up to make the throw to Bob Bailey at first base. But after that, uh, the Mets just kept pounding that ball on Bill Stoneman and have taken that 4 to nothing lead. Well, the next batter up, uh, Bud Harrelson, the shortstop, is all set to face the right-handed uh, pitching of Steve Shea. So I'll return you now to Dave Van Horn. Bill Stoneman went a third of an inning, three hits, two walks, and four runs scored. Crane Bull and Grody, the runners. Crane Bull at third, Grody at first. First pitch. Brings the count, two balls and a strike. This will be uh, Shea's man at the plate. Stoneman had pitched to him. Shea will be responsible for him. Shea fires a strike, and the count goes two and two. Steve Shea, who came from the Astros, was with Houston last year. Here's the pitch, and it's down low. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. In 30 games with Houston last year, Shea won four and lost four. Pitched 35 innings. That was his first time up to the major leagues last year for those at the end of the season after starting off with Oklahoma City in the Pacific Coast League. Tried to pick Grody off first base, but Grody went back in head first, got back in time. Three and two to the batter, Harrelson. Another throw to first, and again, Grody is back. Right-hander Steve Shea holds at the belt. Gives the runners a look. There goes Grody. The pitch is swung on and fouled to the left side. Three and two. Grody, the runner at first, broke with the pitch. 
contacted the runner and swung and fouled it off. Shea, another throw to first base. Grody got back in time. Bud Harrelson, the batter. Yesterday, 0 for 1 at the plate. Here's the pitch as the runner goes. A swing and a miss. A throw to third base and getting back just in time is Ed Greenpool. He just did get back. But Shea comes on to fan Harrelson. Grody is on at first. And Greenpool was just about caught off third by catcher John Bateman. Here's the pitcher, Jim McAndrew, the ninth man to come to the plate here in the first as the Mets have taken a 4 nothing lead, scoring four runs on three hits. McAndrew bats right. Shea, a long look at Grody, the runner at first, fires low and outside, ball one. is moved in to the pitcher McAndrew who just took a strike so it's one and one Shea making his first appearance of this season he didn't work yesterday just missed down low two balls and one strike Shea uh, mentioned he didn't work yesterday. We had Grant, McGinn, Shaw, Sambara, Robertson all pitched yesterday. Here's the fly ball right center. Could be trouble for Staub. He makes a diving catch to end the inning. Rusty Staub with a great play in right field. Tore up a piece of the turf out there as he came in to make the grab. But it's a fine running catch. Staub down on his knees when he pulled it in as that turf gave way under him. Players were complaining about that after yesterday's game. Four runs on three hits. No errors in the field. Two runners stranded. The score at the end of one, New York four, Montreal nothing. Well, your best buy for the most fun is a season ticket to watch the Expos play at Jerry Stadium. You save up to 10%, but that's not all. You get choice seats every game. No fuss, no standing in line. Season tickets make great gifts. They're a fine way to entertain friends or customers or business prospects. And for your own pleasure, they're the best. A box seats cost $350, which means you save $35 if you buy a box seat. Reserve seats cost $250, which means if you buy a reserve seat, you will save $19.50. A good idea is to share season tickets with your friends. Everyone likes a different ball player. Some people like to see Willie Mays and Juan Marichal perform. So you split it down the middle, maybe. You say, well, you take uh, Mays and Marichal. I'll take Bob Gibson and Lou Brock. This is a great way to share and see uh, most of the action in the National League this year by following the Expos, buy season tickets, and split them in half. Moving into the top half of the second inning, the Expos have some catching up to do as they trail the New York Mets by the score of four to nothing. The first man up to bat for the Expos in the top of the second will be Pete first baseman Bob Bailey. Bob Bailey, John Bateman, and Jose LaBoy for the Expos here as we get the second inning underway. Bailey yesterday was two for four and drove in a couple of runs. Four nothing, the Mets lead. Jim McAndrew now with that cushion to work on. Of four runs, here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive past the third baseman Ed Charles out into left field. A low sinking liner for a base hit. Bailey comes up with the Expo's second hit of the afternoon. Rusty Staub had doubled back in the first inning. So here's 
John Bateman. Maybe the Expos can get something going and come back in this one. They came back three times yesterday, hung on and won 11 to 10. Bailey, the runner at first. John Bateman at the plate, right-hand hitter, one of our guests on the pregame show today. He was one for five yesterday. First one is low outside and into the dirt. Ball one. And straight away in the outfield for John Bateman. McAndrew goes to the stretch, the pitch. Low again, ball two. Looking forward to that Chicago series this weekend. Of course, you'll be seeing the Cubs at Jerry Park on the 19th and 20th. Single game Saturday the 19th. Next pitch from McAndrew is low for ball three. So he's behind on Bateman, 3-0. The 19th, the Cubs play a single game Saturday afternoon at Jerry Park, and then a doubleheader on Sunday. Want to check on tickets for that series, too. It's an exciting ball club with Ernie Banks, Ron Santo, Leo DeRocher, the manager of the Cubs. Strike call on Bateman. John was taking that 3-0 pitch all the way. Had no intention of going after it. Looks up to Peanuts Lowry in the third base box for a sign now. The stretch. McAndrew looks over the left shoulder at the runner. Here's the pitch. Ball four. John Bateman draws a walk. McAndrew was about belt high, but missed that inside corner. Going down to second is Bob Bailey. First walk given up by McAndrew. And here is Coco LaBoy. There are six new third basemen in the National League this year. Coco is the only one on one of the, on the expansion teams. McAndrew, low with a slider, ball one. One ball, no strikes. And needless to say, the crowd here on this second day in New York is nothing like we had yesterday when we had over 45,000 watching on opening day. Runners take their leads. The pitch swung on and popped up behind the plate and out of play. Dave, we got uh, Mike Wegener warming up in the Expos bullpen in case uh, we need a pinch hitter here in the bottom and top half of the second inning. Mike Wegener warming up. One ball and one strike. The count on Coco LeBoy. the lead runner. He's off second base. Bateman leading off of first base. Straight away in the outfield for LeBoy. Pitch is low and outside. Blocked in the dirt. Rolls out in front of the plate. The count is two and one. Andrew to the stretch. And now the pitch. Low ball three. Three and one. LaVoy, along with Bill Sadukas of Los Angeles, Bobby Mercer of the Yankees, Bobby Etheridge of the Giants, Bill Melton of the White Sox, and Richie Hebner of the Pirates are the new third baseman that won starting roles this spring. Amos Otis of the Mets uh, been considered as a starter at third base, but he had to give way to the veteran Ed Charles. The boy waiting at the plate. Now McCandra is ready. Here comes the pitch. Low and outside. Ball four. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Bailey moves to third. Bateman to second. Bailey got on with a single, and now McAndrew has issued walks to Bateman and LaBoy, and we have Don Hahn at the plate. Dave, as Frankie Frisch used to say, all those bases on ball. Don was
was 0 for 3 yesterday. So he's got a big opportunity today, this youngster, right-hand hitter, Don Hahn, the Expo center fielder. Base is loaded. Here's the pitch from McAndrews. Swung on, base hit up the middle. The Expos are going to score here. Coming in is Bailey to score. Here's the play at the plate on Bateman. He slides and he's safe. And going down to third is LeBoy. Don Hahn drives in a couple of runs. Single to center. And it's a 4-2 ball game. Bailey with run number one. Bateman with run number two. LeBoy moved around to third. Close play at the plate, but Bateman slid, and Grody was off to the right side of the plate. And after he took the throw, he had to lean over to Bateman. By then, John Stowe had hit the plate. Fine piece of running by John Bateman, a big man. Now we get the pinch hitter, Ty Klein. So it uh, evidently will be Mike Wagner coming in for the Expos. Dave, uh, we have an activity in the Mets bullpen. I believe it's Tug McGraw, a left-hander, warming up for the Mets. So Ty Klein will be the batter for Steve Shea. Four-two ball game now as the Expos come up with a couple of hits here in the second. Runners at first and third, still nobody out. Third baseman Charles way in. Here's the pitch. It's low, ball one. Boy at third and on at first base, Don Hahn. He represents the tying run in this one. We're in the top of the second, 4-2, the Mets lead. And the Expos still threatening with a rally going here. A strike call as the fastball hit the outside corner just above the knees. One ball and one strike. Ty is a left-hand hitter. Got into the game yesterday. Came to the plate one time. mistaken uh, flight out. He was hitless in that one trip anyway. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled left side. Out of play. A ball and two strikes. Wind is blowing from our left to our right. Bright sunshine here at Shea Stadium. In the on-deck circle, Maury Wills. McGraw, the left-hander, continues to heat up in the Mets' bullpen. Here's McAndrew's pitch. Outside, ball two, and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. The center fielder, Tommy Agee, around toward right center for Ty Klein. looking down to Grody for the sign. The stretch and the pitch. It's high. Ball three. Three and two. Klein has nine years in the major leagues. Has a lifetime batting average of 239. Year before last hit 270 with the San Francisco Giants. Slipped to 223 last year. Baseball's most versatile players, Ty Klein, at the plate for the Expos right now. Here's the pitch. Check swing. It's high ball four, and the bases are loaded with nobody out again. Klein draws a walk. Hahn moves down to second. LeBoy is at third. The third walk given up. So here in the second, Bailey got a single. Bateman walked. LeBoy walked. Hahn drove in two runs with a single. And now the sacks are loaded again with LaVoy at third, Hahn at second, Klein at first. Manager Gil Hodges has already taken the baseball from Jim McAndrews, so that'll be it. Starters didn't go far here today. 
It looks like we're going to have another long afternoon. Yesterday's uh, game took three hours and 35 minutes, but it was well worth it. We had plenty of action. The Expos winning that game by the score of 11 to 10. Right now, the Mets are leading the Expos 4 to 2, and I must say that scoreboard looks a lot better now with the lead cut to two runs and with the bases loaded and nobody out here in the top half of the second inning. And it was obvious that Jim McAndrew just uh, just didn't have it this afternoon, the same as Bill Stroman of the Expos. So perhaps uh, Dick Young, writing in the New York Daily News today or last night, uh, was correct when he said that the pitchers might be suffering from a case of Marvin Miller arms which means that Marvin Miller, the head of the Players Association, uh, uh, held uh, the training back, uh, not Miller himself, but uh, in representing the Players Association, the pitchers, uh, like all the players, reported the spring training late, and uh, the pitchers need a lot of time to get their arms in shape, and perhaps this is why we're seeing so much uh, fireworks. Let's certainly hope for the Expo's sake anyway that this is one of the reason for uh, pitchers like Bill Stroman and the men who worked yesterday on the hill. So uh, that's the situation. Jim McAndrew off to the showers, and we have a left-hander now to face uh, the Montreal Expo's, Tug McGraw. Now, uh, this means that uh, Maury Wills will bat right-handed when he comes up to the plate. The uh, left-handers, the left-hand hitters in the Expos lineup are Rusty Staub, uh, Mac Jones, and uh, that's it. And yesterday, Staub proved that left-handers didn't bother him when he hit that long home run over the power alley in right center field. Jones, too, can tag a left-hand pitcher, but the Staub, Rusty Staub can hit against anyone. Uh, be a left-hander or right-hander, and he proved that yesterday. So it's Tug McGraw, a left-hander, now taking his warm-up pitches with the Expos uh, having the bases loaded here in the top half of the second inning. They have scored two runs. Bailey and Bateman have come in. Lavoie is on third. Hahn is on second. And uh, Ty Klein with a walk is on first base. All these runners will be responsibility of Jim McAndrew the three that are on base right now so his record is not yet complete but he went one inning gave up three hits three walks and two runs and now Tug McGraw McGraw first came up in 1965 with the Mets little left-hander six foot 175 Here's the pitch to Maury Wills, swung on and foul to the right side, strike one. Wills batting right against McGraw. First inning, Maury grounded out to the second baseman. 4-2. The Mets lead the Expos, and the Expos have the sacks loaded with nobody out. Pitch is high, a ball and a strike now to Maury. third, Don Hahn at second, Ty Klein the runner at first outfield around to the right for Wills, here's the pitch, it swung on and missed one and two the count each runner has about a two, three step off the bag Here's McGraw's pitch. Fastball's a little high and outside. Two balls and two strikes. This could be a real big inning for the Expos. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a fly ball down the right field line, turning foul. Back into the far reaches of those right field lower stands, the box seat area. Just missed going into the first deck. Two and two. To Maury Wills. The pitch swung on and parked foul over to the right again. The Expos have got Don Hahn at second base representing the tying run in this ball game. They've got the go-ahead run on at first with Ty Klein. Now to bring him around. Will's waiting. Here's the 
Here comes McGraw's pitch and a foul straight back into the stands under our boot. Two and two. Maury sending all kinds of souvenirs to the fans here. Gary Sutherland on deck. Nobody out here in the second. Two runs in already. time and stepped out of the batter's box for just a moment. Breeze blowing straight in toward home plate. Not much of one, just enough to cool things off a little bit. Here's the windup and McGraw's pitch. Fastball missed the outside corner. Three and two. Full count, Amari. McAndrew, the starter, giving way to Tug McGraw. Here, couldn't get anybody out in the second. Ball four, it's high and outside, and the run comes home on the walk. Wills draws the walk. There is run number three, still nobody out, and the Expos are within one run now, catching up with the Mets at 4 3. And it brings Gary Sutherland to the plate. Jose LaBoy scoring from third base on the walk issued to Mari Wills. Don Hahn moves down to third base. Ty Klein to second. Wills the runner at first. And the batter, Gary Sutherland. Bases loaded. Nobody out. McGraw wants to do that for us. You know, we could stay here a long time doing that. Strike one call on Gary Sutherland. hand hitter. 0 for 1. Grounded out to the third baseman in the first inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and it's a high hopper. McGraw has it to play at the plate for 1. The first base double play. Real fine double play here by the Mets. Sutherland hits into a twin killing. Score at 1 to 2 to 3. second and Ty Klein to third as they erase LeBoy at the plate. Dave will take this opportunity to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. You're listening to X-Ball Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio System. Now back to X-Ball Baseball. Stop now with two outs, runners at second and third, Klein at third, and Maury Wills at second. Stop one for one, double to left center in the first inning. Now that was a big double play as McGraw got Gary Sutherland to hit a bouncer right back to him. McGraw looks to Grody for the side. Here comes the pitch, fastball. there. Grody cocked his arm as if to throw to third base and he chased Ty Klein back to the bag. Ty went in head first. He thought Grody was going to throw. Here's McGraw's pitch. Swung on and popped up. Saab hits a high pop-up. First base side over in foul territory. Cranepool near the coaching box. He's got it. And McGraw came on to work out of a jam here. Did a great job. But the Expos in the second came up with three runs on two hits. There were no errors. Two runners were left on base. And the score now, at the end of an inning and a half, the New York Mets four, the Montreal Expos three. Checking our out-of-town scoreboard, Philadelphia's at Chicago. There's no score playing in the bottom half of the second inning. Wise is pitching for the Phillies, and Bill Hands for the Chicago Cubs. Other action in the National League will be at night. Los Angeles plays Cincinnati. Pittsburgh will be at St. Louis. San Francisco. 
Frisco play in Atlanta and Houston will play at San Diego. Over in the American League this afternoon, Chicago was playing at Oakland, but of course that's a late start, and we won't have any score in that ball game for quite some time. There are three games scheduled for tonight in the American League. The Yankees play at Washington, Minnesota will be playing in Kansas City, and Seattle will be at uh, Anaheim, California to meet the California Angels. Here uh, at uh, Shea Stadium in New York, it's 4-3 for the New York Mets over the Montreal Expos as we move into the bottom half of the second inning. The Mets scoring their four runs in the first inning, the Expos getting their three runs in the top half of the second inning. Well, to start off the bottom half of the second inning, the Expos have a new pitcher, a big right-hander, Mike Wagoner, now taking his warm-up pitches. Wagoner came in from the bullpen uh, to uh, to take over from uh, Steve Shea, who was pulled for a pinch hitter in the Expos' big inning in the top half of the second inning. Here again, Dave Van Horn. All right, get our first look now at Mike Wagoner. Mike had been somewhat of a disappointment this spring. And manager Gene Mox just hoping that now that the season is underway, Wagner will uh, come through as he expects. He's a youngster, 23 years old. Mock believes that uh, there are a couple of young pitchers on this staff that have got to come through and that will come through. Wagner's one of them. Got a look at him in 1968 in the Philadelphia Phillies training camp and uh, liked what he saw there. So he was drafted. He was their eighth choice in the October expansion draft. Big man, 6'4. Broke in in 64 with Bluefield in the Appalachian League. Last year with San Diego in the Pacific Coast League, 1 4, lost 12, 3.51 ERA. The better. Tommy Agee here in the Mets half of the second. Top of the order. Agee, Gaspar, and Boswell. Wagner has completed his warm-ups now. The big right-hander is ready to go to work. The wind-up and the pitch. Swing and a miss at the fastball. Strike one. Agee grounded out to the shortstop Wills in the first inning. Steve Shea worked two-thirds of an inning, struck out one. Bill Stoneman was the starter. He got chased after a third of an inning. And a low outside pitch, and A.G. would like to eat the bat right about now. Boy, the minute he took the cut at that pitch, he reminded himself that that's a no-no to go after one of those. Here's the pitch, outside, ball two. Uh, ball one, rather. One ball, two strikes. really groaned when A.G. went after that. It's a lot of fun to listen to the fans' reaction to the ball players. Here's a foul back to the screen. Count remains one ball, two strikes. Don't forget Saturday and Sunday, the Expo ticket office in the Dominion Square building will be open 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can get your tickets. Uh, Ask him about that second day that the Cardinals are in town and the weekend series with Chicago coming up. Here's a foul way back into the upper deck to our right. Count is still one ball and two strikes. Mets scored four runs on three hits in the first inning. A 4-3 ball game. The Mets lead. Mike Wagner delivers inside. Ball three. Full count to A.G. Exposed center fielder Hahn swung around toward right. A.G. will hit very often to the opposite field, more often than not. Here's a fastball swung on, lifted high into the air. That might have gone all the way up to the third deck. Three and two. Well, they're underway at 
Chicago and in the third inning, Philadelphia and the Cubs scoreless. One afternoon game be about four o'clock our time, Chicago at Oakland in the American League. Here's another foul back behind the screen. Van must have made a fine catch, couldn't see. But uh, in the reaction of the crowd here, somebody made a good catch of that foul ball off the bat of Tommy Agee. Here comes a 3-2 pitch from Wagoner. Swung on and a comebacker. Wagner gloves it, throws the first. That's all for Agee. One away. And that brings Rod Gaspar to the plate. Well, about each time Gaspar has come to the plate, we've told you that he was a rookie sensation in camp. Maybe we better take a look at Gaspar's record here and tell you something about the youngster. This is just his third year in pro ball. Broke in in 1967 with Williamsport. Took the first pitch and a strike is called. 0-1 to Gaspar. Last year he was with Memphis. Hit 309 in 135 games. Only two home runs, 47 RBIs. He's a singles hitter mainly. Davey hit 301 in spring training this year. Here's a foul straight back. Down at the base of the screen. 0-2. Wagner out in front. Only had a chance to see Mike one time during spring training. And uh, based on that one-time performance down in Florida, as compared to this, uh, these pitches he's throwing right now, he's looking sharp. Here comes the pitch. Fastball swung on. Loop foul behind the dugout behind the Expos dugout over to our left. 0-2 to Gaspar. Gaspar actually was drafted by New York back in 1966, but he wanted to stay in college, and he signed the secondary phase of the draft in June of 67. Pitch down low and inside. One ball and two strikes. In his second year of pro ball, which was last year in the Texas League, he was a member of the All-Star team, stole 25 bases last season. Fine young athlete, Rod Gaspar at the plate. Here's a, thing, a line drive up the middle. Coming in on it is Don Hahn, and Hahn trapped the ball, made a great try for it, and did an even better job of keeping the ball from getting by. It's a base hit for Gaspar, but Hahn really came in and trapped the ball down at his knees. It was just uh, very close to making a spectacular catch of that sinking line drive to center field. A base hit for Rod Gaspar. First hit given up by Wagner. That brings Kenny Boswell to the plate. The second baseman, number three man in the order. One out and one on. Bottom of the second. Mets four, Expos three. That's the way they stand in hits, two, four, three. Stretch by Wagner, a look at Gaspar. The pitch inside, down to the dirt, blocked by Bateman, ball one. Almost the same pitch that uh, that got him the last time, Boswell, when Stallman was pitching. That breaking curve that cut inside, and he dropped the big way very quickly. Perhaps Boswell was remembering uh, that last pitch by Stallman. Boswell's not as close to the plate this time <laughs> as he was the last time. He backed off an inch or two. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul at the plate. A ball and a strike. To Kenny Boswell. Tomorrow afternoon, right here at Shea Stadium, we'll get Larry Jaster against Gary Gentry. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there could be a change. It could be Morton. Morton right now is scheduled to go against the Chicago Cubs Friday afternoon against Rich Nye, but that might be reversed. Easy throw over to first base, and Gaspar has all day to get back. Wagner just letting him know that he knows he's there and doesn't want him to take too much of a lead. 
Wagner's pitch outside. Bateman had to reach for that one. Fastball. Two balls and a strike. On deck, Cleon Jones. Wagner to the stretch. Again, a throw to first. Diving back in is Gaspar. And the pitch. Check swing. It's down low. Ball three. Three and one. Gaspar with pretty fair speed uh, has Mike a little worried. Gaspar calls time and steps out. Third base coach Eddie Yost is going through his sign routine. Here's Wagner's pitch. There goes Gaspar. Bateman's throw down to Wills at second. Oh, we never did. It was ball four. So we didn't get a need to get a call. The question is, why did Bateman fire it down so quickly? John wasn't taking any chance, I guess, on the ball strike count. Boswell at first, Gaspar at second. Two aboard here with only one out. Infield again at double play depth. Stepping in, Cleon Jones, the right-hand hitter. Jones got a base hit and drove in a run in the first inning. Wagoner delivers. And it's a foul tip on a check swing. Fouled sharply over into the box seats behind the Mets dugout down to our right. Strike one. Well, we've heard from several people in Montreal and know that uh, it was as great a day up there in Montreal as it was here in New York for everybody. They wanted the Expos to win. Here's a curveball that broke beautifully for a strike call. 0-2. Swagner gets out in front on Cleon Jones, the batter. Boswell is the runner in first. Gaspar is second. One out. The 0-2 pitch to Jones. Curveball. got to be the noisiest uh, ballpark in baseball. LaGuardia Field is not far from here, and a jet passes over about every 70 seconds. And, of course, the fans are extremely noisy as they're pulling for their men. Wagoner looking down to Bateman for the sign. He's got it. Checks the runner at second. The pitch is fouled again to the right. Up into the first tier of seats. Shea Stadium... Beautiful ballpark. Seating area extends from the right field line all the way around to the left field line. And the outfield is open. And there are three tiers of stands. And then tremendous box seat sections. Here's a line drive to short to the second baseman. Sutherland, he grabs, flips to Wills, and they get the double play as Gaspar is caught off second. Leon Jones hits into an inning-ending double play and score that one four to six. The line drive right to Sutherland, who just flipped the ball to Wills, so they caught Gaspar off second. So that's all for the Mets. Wagner got out of it. No runs, one hit. No errors, and one left. And the score at the end of two innings here at Shea Stadium, the New York Mets four, the Montreal Expos three. Price is right, the games are great, so come on out to Jerry Park. Find an Expo baseball party several times this season and watch the Expos play ball. The thing to do this year is to plan an Expo baseball party. Your family and friends 
all the baseball people on your block or your club, your class, or your business group. Plan a day or a night at Jerry Park several times during the year. Call the Expos and ask for the group sales department. The area code in Montreal for out-of-towners, 514. The telephone number is 875-2300. Let them take care of all the details. Well over a million fans will be heading for Jerry Park this year from northeastern United States, from all over Canada, especially all you folks up there in the Ottawa area listening to our Expo baseball broadcast. So be among them. See the stars of the National League all season long at Jerry Park. Fellows like Willie Mays and Bob Gibson, Pete Rose, Ron Sento, Ernie Banks, Juan Marichal, and many more. Well, as we move into the top half of the third inning, the first man up for the Expos will be left fielder Mac Jones. Here again, Dave Van Horn. All right, Ross, Mac was 0 for 1. In the first inning, he popped up to the shortstop. Left-hand hitter. Doug McGraw, left-hander, fires, and it's fouled back into the screen behind the plate. Strike one to Mac. Outfield shifts around to the right. The strong left-hand hitter. Right side of the infield, both Cranepool and uh, Boswell are back on the edge of the grass. McGraw really comes over the top, and his fastball is a called strike at the outside corner. 0-2. Instead of a three-quarter or sidearm delivery, McGraw comes right over the top his pitches down low. One ball, two strikes. A 4-3 ball game. The Mets scored all their runs in the first. The Expos came back with three in the second. Now we're in the top of the third. Jones, Bailey, and Bateman. High foul. Over to the left. Out of play. say the Mets probably classify this as a disappointing turnout on the second day. Here's a hot ground ball to the left side of the infield. The shortstop Harrelson up with it, throws to first and Jones is retired. One away. The batter will be Bob Bailey. Exposed first baseman. Robert got a base hit in the second to lead off a rally that produced three exposed runs. Right hand hitter. John Bateman is on deck. Here's the pitch. Called strike. In that Philadelphia-Chicago game, they're scoreless in the third inning. Rick Wise for Philadelphia and Bill Hand for the Cubs. McGraw's fastball swung on and a high foul to the right side. Back into the box seats. Second section of the box seat. Count is 0-2 on Bob Bailey. McGraw's pitch. Little change of pace. Took something off a curve ball and struck out Bob Bailey. For McGraw, strikeout number one. As a matter of fact, first strikeout. Against the Expos. Two down, nobody on, and John Bateman steps in. Drill walk in the second. That was against Jim McAndrew, the Mets starter, who went just one inning and then couldn't get a man out in the second. Fastball is inside about belt high. Ball one. fires again. This time a strike is called up around the letters on that inside corner. One ball and one strike. John told us on the pregame show today he was as excited as he's ever been for the ball game. Here's a high fly ball, shallow left center going back, shortstop Harrelson moving in is the left fielder Cleon Jones and Jones takes it for the out. 
Expos go down one, two, three here in the third with nothing across. The score after two and a half, New York four, Montreal three. You know, we were saying earlier this afternoon what a thrill it was to be here at Shea Stadium uh, yesterday afternoon for the curtain raiser between the Mets and the Expos with so many dignitaries on hand, the mayor of Montreal, John Drapeau, Charles Bronfman, the chairman of the board, John McHale, the president of the Expos, also Donald Grant, the chairman of the board of the New York Mets, and many, many uh, more personalities, both from Montreal and from the city of New York. Uh, but there were a few young fellows who really enjoyed yesterday, the members of the Color Guard from the Collège Militaire Royal de Saint-Jean. Five young fellows, and they represented Canada, really. Jean-Charles Lemieux from Ottawa, Greg Barnes from Kelowna, British Columbia. Greg, by the way, is a friend of Nancy Green. Jean-Michel Contois from St. Lambert, Alan Dunlop from Vancouver, and Michel Couture from Rosemary. A big day for these five young gentlemen from Collège Militaire Royal de Saint-Jean yesterday. We're going to move into the bottom half of the third inning with the match still leading the Expos by the score of 4-3. to three. New York taking a 4 to nothing lead with four runs in the bottom half of the first inning. The Expos coming back with three runs in the top half of the second inning. The first man up uh, for the New York match will be third baseman Ed Charles. Charles, then Ed Crane, Bull, and Jerry Grody here in the bottom of the third for the New York Mets. Charles drew a walk in the first inning. He's a right-hand hitter. They say that Charles was the Cinderella story of the Mets last year. He reported to training camp on invitation. Here's the base hit down the left field line. Charles rounds first and heads for second. Max Jones trying to dig the ball out of the corner. Charles going for third. Here comes the relay by Will.
boy, the bounce of the ball sometimes. That one was just off the glove of Mike Wagner. Bound it over to Sutherland, who picked it up, checked the runner, and threw to first to get Crane Bull. If you're scoring by members, that goes one to four to three. Charles still at third, one out. The batter, Jerry Grody, the catcher. Right-hand hitter, he's one for one. Wagner's fastball's down in the dirt, blocked by Bateman. Ball one. Infielders still in on the edge of the grass, except for LeBoy for this right-hand hitter. LeBoy off the edge of the grass, about four or five steps. Here's the pitch from Wagner. Low and outside, ball two. The outfield is straight away. National League All-Star catcher Jerry Grody at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a line drive. Territory and with a stand-up double at second base and an RBI is second of the afternoon, Jerry Grody. So a couple of extra base hits here in the third produce another Met run. Five-three ball game now. Third hit of Wagner. That brings Bud Harrelson. The shortstop to the plate, he struck out in the first. Wagner checks the runner, Grody in second, a swing and a miss, strike one. Six hits all told for the Mets so far in this one. Wagner delivers curveball, swung on, fly ball, left center coming in fast, Vaughn still coming, still coming, it's gonna drop in there. And racing to third base is Jerry Grody. And on at first base with a base hit is Bud Harrelson. Third hit of the inning. Grody moved down to third. Fourth hit off Mike Wagoner. And the batter will be the pitcher, Tug McGraw. Taken for strike one called by McGraw. I'd like to remind you fans who are thinking seriously about season tickets that uh, they will remain on sale for a time after the season starts. So you'll be able to inquire when you come to Jerry Park about season tickets. A bouncing ball left side of the infield. Wills up with a throw to the plate and the tag is put on Mr. Grody. He is out at the plate. Wills to Bateman for the out. McGraw is on on the fielder's choice. Moving down to second base, Harrelson. That'll bring Tommy Agee to the plate. Two outs now. Runners at first and second. Harrelson at second. McGraw, the runner at first now. And Agee, right-hand hitter, 0 for 2 at the plate. Grounded out twice, once to Wills, once to Wagner. The stretch by Mike and the pitch. Curveball, low outside, ball one. John Bateman didn't give uh, Jerry Grody any of that plate at all when Grody came in. He just blocked it as though he was Placeville Marie sitting right there. Bateman does a great job at blocking that plate. Curve ball this time broke beautifully and hit the inside corner. Strike one. One ball and one strike. The wind up and the pitch. Uh, check swing. Did he go around? No. Two balls and a strike. Charles 
Eagles led the inning off with a triple. Scored on Grody's double. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. That evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. Wagner's got pretty good stuff today. Although he has given up three hits in this inning when he's grooved it right down the middle. He's been able to get his fastball by. Breaking ball, swung on, fly ball, down the right field line. Stop moving over near the line, and he's under it, makes the catch as he crossed into foul territory. So A.G. fouls out to the right fielder, Rusty Staub. And that's it for the Mets here in the third. A run on three hits. No errors in the field. And we had two stranded. The score at the end of three innings of play, the New York Mets five, the Montreal Expos three. Well, repeating that box office information for Expo fans in the Montreal area, also those in the northeastern United States, up around Ottawa, who are listening uh, to our broadcast this afternoon, the box office will remain open Saturday and Sunday from 8.30 in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. Now, the Expos up until... Uh, after the St. Louis series, the series with the Cardinals, which opens on Monday, they will be accepting season ticket subscriptions up until after the series with the St. Louis Cardinals. The telephone number of Montreal for further information on tickets, area code 514, the number is 875-2300, the Montreal Expos, if you're writing 1010 St. Catherine Street West, if you're writing for any ticket information. There'll be a thousand uh, bleacher seats uh, going on sale at Jerry Park on Monday, uh, Monday morning at Jerry Park for the big opener Monday afternoon. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Network. And you're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio System. Now back to Expo Baseball. The totals after three for the Mets, five runs, seven hits, no errors. For the Expos, three runs on three hits, no errors. The Expos have left three runners aboard. The Mets have left five on base. And now Tug McGraw will face the bottom third of the Expos order. As we move to the fourth inning, here's Russ Taylor. Thanks very much, Dave. Well, it's Tug McGraw on the hill for the New York Mets and Jose Coco Laboy at bat for the Montreal Expos. Coco had a big thrill yesterday. His big hit was a home run off Ron Taylor well over the left field fence some 350 feet, 358 feet from home plate. The first pitch to Laboy is outside for ball one. One and all the count on Jose Coco Laboy. In the fourth inning at Chicago, it's a two-all tie between the Phillies and the Chicago Cubs. Next pitch is swung on out of the left field for a base hit, maybe good for an extra one. Lavoie takes the turn at first but holds up with a single. Jose Coco Lavoie leads off the top half of the fourth inning with a single for the Expo. That brings up John Hahn, who had a big thrill in the uh, second inning when he got his first major league hit and knocked in two runs in the Expo's three-run rally in the second inning as they were trailing four to nothing to the Mets. So here's Hahn in the top half of the fourth inning with a runner on first, nobody out. The man on first, Coco Laboy, the pitch to Hahn is swung on a changeup, strike one. Owen won the count on Don Hahn. Five to three for the Mets over the Expos. In the top half of the fourth inning, Hahn steps out of the batter's box. He's asking for the rosin bag and gets it from pitcher Mike Wagner is over there. The batter's boxes, by the way, here at Shea Stadium, bear the insignia of the two teams. The Mets, of course, uh, along the first baseline have that Mets uh, uh, logo, and that colorful Expo logo is in the batter's box at third base. Here's the on-one pitch now to Hahn. He lays down a bunt. It rolls foul along the third baseline. So it's 0-2. the sacrifice was on, trying to get LeBoy down to second base. McGraw was quick to pounce on that ball as it uh, rolled over the third base uh, line to make sure that it stayed foul. So 
the count is 0-2 to Don Hahn, the center fielder. 21 years of age. Played with Fresno in the California League last year. McGraw watching his man Coco Lavoy at first base. McGraw the left-hander. So he'll be facing the bag at first. Lavoy still takes a healthy lead. Here's the pitch to Hahn. Ball one. One and two the count. Hahn steps out momentarily, looks down to Peanuts Lowry at the third base coaching slot. Leon Jones in left field, Tommy Agee in center, Rod Gasper in right for the match. The boy on first, here's the pitch, in there for call strike three. So Don Hahn gets caught looking at a third strike. That brings up pitcher Mike Wagner, takes off his uh, warming jacket to step in. Wagner, a real big fellow with the Expos, a towering man. And when he fires that pill from the pitcher's mound, it must look like an aspirin tablet. Mike Wagner stands 6'4", weighs 197 pounds, swings right-handed. One away, runner on first base. Here's the pitch. Wagner attempts a bunt and pulls back as a high pitch. As Phil Rizzuto used to always say, you never bunt at anything but strikes. count. One away. Mike Wagner, the pitcher. McGraw checks his man. There's the pitch. It's high for ball two. Two and all the count. And Wagner checks the game with Phoenix Lowry. Bob Oldis is the coach on first base. Manager Gene Mock with his warming jacket pacing up and down. Hands in the pocket in the Expos dugout back in the third base line. In there for call strike, a fastball. Two and one the count. Action tonight in the National League. Los Angeles at Cincinnati, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, San Francisco at Atlanta, and Houston at San Diego. McGraw checks his man. The pitch to Wagner. He bunts it foul. So the count is two and two. On the Expo batter, Mike Wagner. He checks with Lowry to see if, with a two-strike count, he swings away or takes the chance of running foul. We'll see. McGraw checks his runner. He bunts, and it's a fair bunt, and the sacrifice is good, as McGraw has no choice but to go to Ken Boswell covering the bag at first. A sacrifice by Mike Wagner with two strikes on him. He goes out, one to four, covering at first base. The runner, LaBoy, down safely at second in scoring position. Two out, that brings up Maury Wills. And Wills will bat uh, right-handed against the left-handed offerings of Tug McGraw. Maury, in his uh, first appearance, grounded out second to first. He walked in the second. Field playing Maury straight away, not too deep. There's actually a big hole in left center field as A.G. has moved over towards right center. Swung on and missed by Will, strike one. McGraw throwing real hard out there now. A lot of planes flying over here. You probably hear them in the background. Jay Stadium must be an audio engineer's nightmare. A long lead by LaVoy at second. The pitch is lowered outside. The count is one and one to Maury Wills. One of the stars in yesterday's ball game. Getting those three hits, making some outstanding defensive plays. McGraw watches his man. There's swung on and foul. One and two the count. Big reminder on the the Giants scoreboard here that the Giants and Dodgers make only two trips to Shea Stadium this season. And of course, they'll be making their two trips to Jerry Park this year. McGraw watches his man. The pitch to Wills is swung on and missed. Four strike three. And Morty Wills goes down swinging. So for the Expos, in 
the top half of the fourth inning. No runs on one hit, no errors. One man, Coco LaVoy, left on base. The score after three and a half innings of play, New York Mets five, Montreal Expos three. All right, we'll take a moment here to look at the action coming up here in the month of April at Jerry Park. Of course, you know the Cardinals will be here this coming Monday and Tuesday. The National League champion, St. Louis Cardinals. Then the ball club will be at Philadelphia. It'll be the Expos and the Phillies on the 16th and 17th at Connie Mack Stadium. An off day on Friday the 18th. They'll welcome the Chicago Cubs to Jerry Park on Saturday the 19th and the first doubleheader of the season this com- uh, Sunday, a week from this coming Sunday, the 20th, against the Chicago Cubs at Jerry Park. You want to ask about tickets for that right now? Also, the Philadelphia series, a two-game set, the 23rd and 24th, Phillies will be in, and these New York Mets will be in for the first of three trips that they'll make to Jerry Park on the 29th and 30th. The Mets and the Expos, a 4 o'clock game, the 29th, and an 8 o'clock, well, actually 4.05 game, the 29th, and a 8.05 game on the 30th. All of the divisional teams, all of the Eastern Division teams will be in to Jerry Park three times, and the Expos will visit them three times, and the Western Division teams be two series home and home. Rod Gasper stepping up for the Mets. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, takes the first pitch uh, low at the knees for ball one. One and all the count to right fielder Rod Gaspar. Rod had two hits in yesterday's ball game and knocked in a run. He uh, has a almost not an unorthodox stance, but he's got his foot in the bucket. He lines it foul down the line, just by inches past Bob Bailey at first base, and rolls all the way down the right field line for the Expos because had that ball been about three inches to the left, it would have gone for extra bases. But it just becomes a long strike. One and one the count. One ball and one strike. On left-hand hitter, Rod Gaffer, the right fielder. Jose Laboy playing on the fringe of the infield grass at third. Wagner throws. leading off, flies out to Don Hahn in center field. That brings up Ken Boswell, the second baseman. Boswell was hit by the pitcher, Bill Stoneman, in the first and walked in the second. The first pitch is inside to him as he steps back, taking no chances on those breaking balls to the inside. He'll probably have a big well in his bag at the end of this game after taking that pitch from Stoneman. Call strike one. One and one the count. One away, bottom half of the fourth inning with the Mets, leading the Expos 5-3. to three. The Mets scoring four runs in the bottom half of the first inning. The Expos came back with three in the top of the second. Wagner delivers. It's low for ball two. Two and one the count. Outfield shifted over to the right on Ken Boswell. Jones in left center. And moving way over to the right is Don Hahn in center field. Rusty Staub is playing more or less a true right field. It's 341 down the lines here. The pitch to ball. There's a hard hit ball going deep out in the right field. I don't know. It is gone. Ken Boswell. Home run over the right field wall for the New York Mets. And he gets a standing ovation. that ball and you know you knew it was gone so did Rusty stop in right field as soon as it was hit Rusty turned and said what's the heck in running after this one it was well hit probably traveled 380 feet toward right center just to the right of the 371 mark the pitch is low and into the dirt to Cleon Jones Jones knocked in the first run. 
with a single to left field in the first. Leon John, the left fielder. The pitch that Jones has swung on in the right field down the line. Maybe trouble stop. I don't know if he can get to it. He gets it right at the line. A nice catch. Nice running catch by Rusty Staub, who went after that ball. Down the line, into the corner in right field. Deep right field, right close to the wall to pick it off. And Jones. As Jones uh, certainly threw a scare into the Expos and to Mike Wagner. Had that ball dropped in there against the wall, it would have gone for extra bases. That brings up Ed Charles. He walked in the uh, first and hit that long triple and scored finally in the third inning. On one, the count to Ed Charles. Right-hand hitter, he's a veteran on the Mets lineup, in the Mets lineup, and he's the inspiration guy. Takes it high and inside. Had to duck away for it. Ball one. One on one the count with two out. One run in on Ken Boswell's home run over the right field wall. Mike Wagner, all set, pumps, delivers. Curveball in there. First call strike two. One and two the count. Charles looks down to Eddie Yost, third base coach. Now steps back in. Yogi Berra, the coach at first base for the Mets. Wagner throws, it's low and into the dirt, outside, for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. On Ed Charles, right-hand hitter. Wagner throws, high and inside. So, Wagner has the full count on Charles. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Umpire behind the plate, big Stan Landis. Pitch is low and outside for ball four. So Wagner gives up a walk to Ed Charles. That brings up Ed Cranepool. Cranepool, as we told you yesterday, over too well with a lot of the fans. Of course, those who boo can be heard a lot easier than those who cheer. And I guarantee you all those people who were booing yesterday were cheering in the first inning on that fine hit. The ball hit down a nice play by Sutherland at second over to Wills for the fourth. And the side is retired, but not without some damage as Ken Boswell hit that home run. For the New York Mets in the fourth inning, one run on one hit, no errors, one man left on base. The score after four complete innings of play, New York Mets, six, Montreal Expos, three. Well, let's take a moment here to check the scoreboard. One other game this afternoon in the National League, and that is Philadelphia at Chicago. The Phillies have come up with a couple of runs, and it's now Chicago four, Philadelphia two. They're in the fifth with Philadelphia batting. Rich Nye, uh, not Rich Nye, but Bill Hands pitching for Chicago, and Rick Wise for Philadelphia. 4-2, the Cubs lead the Phillies, fifth inning. Tonight in the National League, Los Angeles will be at Cincinnati, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, San Francisco at Atlanta, and Houston at San Diego. In the American League, later on this afternoon, getting underway about 4 o'clock Eastern time, That'll be the Chicago game at Oakland tonight. New York is at Washington, Minnesota at Kansas City, and Seattle at California. That rounds out the Major League schedule for today. Tomorrow afternoon, right here at Shea Stadium, our Montreal Expos and the New York Mets will play game number three of this three-game series before moving on to Chicago. We hope you'll be with us tomorrow. 1.45 will be airtime over most of these Expos baseball network stations. If you were to ask any New York baseball fan who's from Glendale, California, the answer would be old case Casey Stengel. But uh, this young fellow stepping in for the Expos, second baseman Gary Sutherland, is from Glendale. So, old case Casey Stengel representing the, the old baseball world, and Gary Sutherland, the new crop of baseball stars. 
Pitch to Sutherland is swung on into right field. Could be trouble going back. Gasper's got it now on the warning track for the out. As Sutherland hits strongly to right field, sending Rod Gasper back toward the line on the warning track to pull it down. That brings up Rusty Stop. Stop in his first appearance in the first inning hit a tremendous double to left center field. There was a big hole uh, left there by Cleon Jones in left and Tommy Agee in center, and that's where Rusty put it. When Rusty gets to Jerry Park, you're going to see his his grip, his stance. Not so much his stance, but his grip seems to be unorthodox. Takes the first pitch, ball one. And he was explaining to uh, Dave and myself last night his reason for such a grip. He feels that uh, he can hit the ball where it's pitched, providing it in, in the strike zone. He's got a quick pair of wrists on him. Can go to any field. Takes it low for ball two. Needless to say, Tug McGraw on the hill for the Mets this afternoon won't want to give Rusty anything good. And Staub is dangerous against left-handers as well as right-handers. Here's a pitch. Oh, a hard hit ball right in the league. Love of Ed Crane pulled at first base. This is certainly a game of inches, Dave. Boy, it sure is. Rusty hit that ball well. Line drive. Right to the first baseman, Ed Cranepool. Cranepool didn't have to move. Just reached up uh, to his left and grabbed it. But Staub hit the ball well. Mac Jones had a pair of hits in yesterday's ball game, a pair of doubles. Left-hand hitter facing the left-hander, Tug McGraw. Two up, two down so far here in the top half of the fifth inning with the Mets leading the Expo 6-3. Swung on and missed by Jones. Four strike one. Bailey waiting in the on-deck circle if he gets a chance to swing. There are two out. Pitch by McGraw is low and inside. Gets away from catcher Jerry Grody. Peanut Lowry at third base shouting words of encouragement to Big Mac Jones. Tell you something what Jones said about Montreal in a few minutes. We got a chance. Oh, a hard hit ball on the ground, but right at Second baseman Ken Boswell takes his time, throws first. So the Expos got good wood on the ball, but hit them right to the, the Mets fielders. Jones goes out four to three. For the Expos, in the top half of the fifth inning, no runs and no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. The score going into the bottom half of the fifth inning, six to three for the Mets over the Expos. Couple of notes about Expos baseball tickets. To see the Expos play all the National League opponents that'll be coming into Jerry Park this summer. First of all, this Saturday and Sunday, the Expos ticket office in the Dominion Square building will be open from 8.30 in the morning until 6 p.m. You want to be sure to ask about tickets for the St. Louis Cardinals. Second day, a week from uh, yesterday, next uh, Tuesday. First day is a sellout. There'll be a second day. Uh, we're hoping another sellout, and we're sure the uh, Expos fans won't let us down there, that we're going to have uh, the ballpark sold out two days as the Expos play the St. Louis Cardinals. Check it ahead. Ask about that Chicago series coming up, which will be a two-day, three-game series with the Chicago Cubs over the weekend, a week from this coming weekend at Jerry Park. And it's so easy to get the tickets of your choice because they use the TRS computer system. Call 875-2300 in Montreal. If you're from out of town, call area code 514 and then the number and ask about the Expo's ticket office nearest you. Among the many great stars we'll see at Jerry Park this year will be a fellow named Jerry Grody. The Mets catcher, rated uh, by many as the best arm, as having the best arm of all the catchers in the National League. Lou Brock of the St. Louis Cardinals will tell you that Jerry Grody is the toughest man to steal on. Brock, of course, steals on the pitcher, but once he gets going, that catcher could ruin it for him. Grody takes the first pitch for call strike one. Owen won the count. On Jerry Grody, a real favorite here at Shea Stadium in New York. From San Antonio, Texas, right-hand hitter. Grody had two hits in two appearances. He singled in the first, knocked in a run, and knocked in another run with a single in the third. Jerry Grody. He took over from J.C. Martin.
Martin last year and just wouldn't let go of that catching job. Mike Wagner on the hill. Here's the one-on-one -on -one pitch to Grody. It's high and inside, and he steps away. Two and one the count on the Mets catcher. Upfield playing him straight away and deep. Grody is not noted for hitting the long ball. He hit three home runs last year in 124 games. Had a batting average of 282. An excuse me swing by Grody and Powell tips it to the right side and it rolls along the first baseline. Two balls and two strikes on Grody. Jerry Grody. Charged with only one pass ball in 115 games. He's called out on strikes as Wagner gets it across. Jerry Grody caught looking at a third strike. That brings up Bud Harold, the best shortstop, one of the great defensive players in the National League. Bad to Jerry Park. We'll see a truly great one out there. out in the first. First pitch, he fouls it back of the screen. Strike one. Out of town scores. Four to two for the Cubs over the Phillies playing in the fifth inning. Left hand hitter, this Harrelson. Wagner on the hill. He pumps, delivers, inside. For ball one. One and one the count with one away in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Next pitch, swung on and foul. To the left side of home plate up into the seat. Harrelson is not a fence buster. He has one home run to his credit in his National League career. As we said yesterday, he really had to work for that one. It was an inside-the-park job at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. The count is now run to two and two on Bud Harrelson. But the, the Mets need him for his great defensive abilities. And man, has he got those. Recovered from knee surgery a year and a half ago. Wagner all set. Here's the two and two pitch. Fouled back over the screen. Up into the second deck. Beautiful stadium we have here. If only we could put a, a tag on it and deliver it to Montreal. But we'll be proud of Jerry Park, you may be sure. They've done a great job of Jerry Park. I'll tell you something the mayor, Mayor Drapo, told me on Monday. Swung and a miss. And uh, Bud Harrelson becomes Mike Wagner's second strikeout victim here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. After the parade on Monday, Mayor Grappo turned to me, and in reference to the 200,000 people who turned out for the parade, that fantastic crowd along St. Catherine Street, and that equally fantastic crowd at Place de Marie, he said to me, would you say this would be a referendum for a dome stadium? Enter the dirt first pitch. Let's hope we get it in the not too distant future. Swung on and missed by McGraw. Oh, uh, Bateman. Bateman got hurt on that one. Foul tip. Seems that he may have taken it just above the, the kneecap. Joe Licio. The Expo's trainer is out talking to the, the big Expo catcher, Mike uh, uh, John Bateman. And while that uh, he's receiving treatment from Licio, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is your Expo's Baseball Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. 
Well, back here at Shea Stadium in New York, six to three, the Mets in the fifth inning. The pitch to Tug McGraw, foul the line shot right into the stands, and luckily for one fan that he had his eye on the ball. And we might mention this too. You know, it's been a few years since uh, baseball fans have had an opportunity to attend games in Montreal. The Royals went out of existence in 1916. We've got a lot of fans. Keep your eye on the ball. Swing and a miss. And Mike Wagner strikes out the side. Doug McGraw goes out swinging. So for the Expo, for the uh, New York Mets, in the bottom half of the fifth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. The score after five complete innings of play, six to three for the Mets over the Expo. And as we break for a moment from Expo Baseball, the official weather forecast brought to you by A&P, the store that cares about you. Mostly sunny and mild for this afternoon, high temperature 60 to 65. It will be cloudy for tonight with chance of showers by morning. The low temperature for tonight around 40 degrees. For tomorrow, Thursday, cloudy, windy, and mild. And some possibility of showers. High temperatures for Thursday around 60 degrees. Precipitation probability... For today, near 0%. For tonight, 40%. Current temperature and further weather information in a moment after this from A&P. If you're looking for great food values, A&P's got them and in every department. For example, save now on A&P's super rind quality boneless beef roasts. Cross rib, bottom round, or chuck, your choice at one low A&P price, 99 cents a pound. And A&P gives you fine grain-fed steer beef with no fat added. You're guaranteed to get good eating. And make the most of your roast by serving it with delicious fresh asparagus, large tender spears, only 39 cents a pound. Also featured in the produce department, U.S. number one new Florida white potatoes, five pound bag, 59 cents. And this week, stock up and save on A&P salt, plain or iodized, 26-ounce package, just five cents. Save two with Harvest Pride brand frozen vegetables, peas, corn, peas or carrots, 10-ounce package, only 10 cents. So this week, look to A&P for terrific savings on top-quality merchandise. That's A&P, the store that cares about you. Under mostly sunny skies, the current temperature 63 degrees. The wind south uh, southwest at 9. The humidity 38% with the barometric pressure falling now at 30.29. Once again, mostly sunny and mild for this afternoon. High temperatures expected to 65 degrees. And that's the latest weather information brought to you by A&P, the store that cares about you. Stay tuned for the next A&P weather report at 6 o'clock. Now back to Expo Baseball. Prodigious cuts for the Expos in spring training. Oh, there's a hard hit ball down the line. Looks like it's good for extra bases. Bailey makes the turn at first. Heading for second base. And he's in there with a double. Stand-up double as Bob Bailey really put the wood to that one. Wait past the bag. Down the line into left field. Bailey leads off with a double. That brings up John Bateman. Bateman walked in the uh, second inning, scored one of the Expos runs, one of the three runs, and he uh, flied out to left field in the third. Bateman had a big hit for the Expos yesterday. Big right hand hitter, takes the first pitch, ball one. Today's baseball quiz, can you name out the only set of brothers to win Major League batting titles and the years they did it? Low for ball two. Two and all the count on Bateman. Time is called as catcher Jerry Grody runs halfway out to the mound to talk to Ted McGraw. The runner on second base is Bob Bailey, there with a double down the left field line. Bailey having a great spring training and so far, great first two, uh, two games, uh, opening of the season for Bailey. Montreal will like Bob Bailey, their first baseman. Gasper in right field. It looked like it was going to fall in for a base hit, but Gasper really took off after that, and Bailey holds a second. Oh, Bateman flies out to right fielder Ron Gasper, who almost took 
gets that ball in center field after a long run. Tommy Agee had a pull up in center field. That brings up Coco Leboy. Coco walked in the second and singled in the fourth. Right hand hitter. Bailey with a short lead off second. Stretches it a bit. The first pitch to Coco Leboy is high for ball one. One ball and no strike on Coco Leboy. with Tulsa last year, knocked in 100 runs. So he had a great season, and this is his first year in big league baseball. 15 home runs with Tulsa of the Pacific Coast League. 2-0 oh the count now on Coco Boy, who looks down at Peanut Flowery for his instructions. Bailey with a walking lead off second base. McGraw on the hill, one out. Pitch to LaVoy, swung on into the air, back of the plate, and out of play. Takes a big bomb. Almost tossed a fan on the head. Young fellow just ducked his head in time. We started to tell you before, at those games at Jerry Park, keep your eye on the ball, because some of these line shots, they really go in. And if you're caught looking elsewhere, or talking to friends when that ball is thrown, taking a chance. You want to, and of course, you want to keep your eye on the ball because you want to go home with a souvenir. The pitch to the boy swung on and missed. Four strike two. Two and two now. As McGraw started out with a two and nothing count on the Expo third baseman. Ed Charles at third. Bud Harrelson at short. Ken Boswell at second. And Big A and Queen Pool at first base. Jones in left. A.G. in center. And Gaspar in right field. Bailey, long lead off second, swung on, fouled in front of the plate. The count remains two and two. In the on-deck circle, rookie Don Hahn. And of course, a lot will depend. There is uh, a man warming up in the bullpen. It's Jerry Robertson, a right-hander. So they, if there's one out, and if uh, the boy gets on, it'll be Don Hahn, and then we'll probably have a pinch hitter as the Expos are trailing 6-3 to three in the top half of the sixth inning. McGraw throws, it's high. Full count now on the boy, and again, Jerry Grody walks partway out of the mound, fires the ball back to pitcher Ted McGraw. As another jet flies over from LaGuardia. Outfield playing the boy straight away. Leon Jones fairly deep in left field. down swinging. Bob Bailey let off this inning with a double. Bateman flied to right field and LaVoy struck out. That brings up Don Hahn who knocked in two runs with a single in the second inning. Got caught looking at a third strike in the fourth. Right hand hitter. 21 years of age. Fellow who has amazed everybody at spring training. Pitch to Hahn. He looks ball one. Bailey trots back to the bag at second. Ed Charles doing a little gardening at third, picking up the odd stone or pebble from in front of him. McGraw taking his time out there. Checks his man at second. Here's the pitch to Hahn. Ball two. Two and all the count. Four to two for the Cubs over the Phillies in the sixth inning at Chicago. And that's where we'll be for a series of games before coming home on Sunday. The Expos play in Chicago Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Ball strike one. As McGraw came in with his fastball. A reminder that the Mets' first Ladies' Day is Saturday, April 26th. And we'll have Ladies' Day, too, at Cherry Park this year. Ball three. Three and one the count. And Hahn looks down, gets his sign from Peter Flowery. Bob Oldis, hands in his hip pocket first. 
first base box. Bob Bailey, the runner on second base. The Expos would like to bring Bob in. Swung on, foul against the screen. So we have a full count. On Don Ron. The board has three and one. Three balls and one strike. Oh, at three, two, they've changed it now. They've changed it. That board uh, crossed people up uh, yesterday and just crossed us up momentarily. It's usually pretty quick. The pitch to Han swung on and missed as Ted McGraw gets himself out of trouble with a pair of strikeouts in the sixth inning. For the Expos, no runs on one hit, no errors, one man left on base. The score, after five and a half innings of play, Mets six, Expos three. Well, first man up for the Mets in the bottom of the sixth will be center fielder Tommy Agee, right-hand hitter, Wagner Allstead. He delivers. It's blown outside for ball one. Tommy Agee, American League Rookie of the Year in 1966 when he hit 273 with the Chicago White Sox, hit 22 home runs and knocked in 86 runs and had 44 stolen bases. That was three years ago. The ball hit in the air. Could be trouble along the line in right field. Staub is calling for it. He's got it for the out. As Bailey went out into short right field along the line, but Rusty had control of it all the way, had his eye on the ball and called for it for the out. So A.G. flies out to Rusty Saab and right field. That brings up Rod Gaspar, one of these brilliant rookies. Played with Memphis in the Texas League. He led the Texas League in hits. Also a fast man on the base pass. He stole 25 bases. 1968, last year, he hit 309 with Memphis. Two home runs. To the baseball quiz, the Walker brothers, Dixie and Harry, won the National League titles with Dixie winning on a 357 mark in 44 and Harry 363 in 1947. The two brothers who won the National League batting titles. That was the quiz. And we'll be doing that throughout the year when we get these quizzes. We'll fire them at you just to start a few arguments. Friendly arguments, of course, low and inside. Two balls and one strike. On Rod Gasper. Stands 5'11, 160 pounds, 23 years of age. Bats with his foot in the bucket. Pitch by Wagner. He lays down a butt. Wagner in for it, takes it out, throws the first. Not in time. Yeah. 
three now in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Ed Charles steps in. Wagner watches his man. The pitch is swung on. Picked up by Sutherland over to Wills at second base for the out. So it was second to short covering. Four to six if you're scoring on that fourth out. For the match, one run on two hits. No errors. And one man left on base. The score after six complete innings of play. New York Mets seven. Montreal Expos three. Well, we have a pinch hitter here to start off the seventh inning. Batting for Mike Wagner, the pitcher, will be little Ron Brand, who was obtained from the Houston Astros in the draft. Ron Brand will be making his first appearance of the year in an official ball game for the Expos. A Mr. Everything can play a number of positions. Right-hand hitter, Ron Brand has faced Ted McGraw. And uh, coming in to describe the next three innings, Dave Van Horn. All right, Russ. Seven to three. The Mets lead the Expos here as we move to the seventh now. The first pitch from Doug McGraw. Fastball fired low and outside. Ball one. Don Brand, as Russ mentioned, is one of the versatile players on this Expo team. He's 5'8", 175 pounds. Backup catcher to John Bateman. He can also play several positions in the infield. Here's a foul over to our right. One ball and one strike. Don was in Oklahoma City last season in the Pacific Coast League. He's determined to stick once again. The majors came from the Houston organization. Right hand hitter. Let's one go high. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. Don making his first appearance of this 1969 season at the plate right now in the pinch hitting role. McGraw deals high and inside. Ball three. Three balls and one strike. Outfield is straight away for Brand. The wind is, for the most part, this afternoon has been blowing in toward home plate. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside. Ball four. So Brand draws a walk, and maybe the Expos can get something going now here in the seventh against the Mets. As we move to the top of the order, Maury Wills and Gary Sutherland. Maury Wills this afternoon, 0 for 2. He grounded out in the first inning, drew a walk in the second, and went down swinging in the fourth. Doug McGraw out on the mound, the left-hander, took over for starter Jim McAndrew, who went one inning. McGraw came in in the second, has only given up one hit. Here's the pitch. Low for a ball. Given up two hits, one to Bailey, a double in the sixth, and a base hit to LeBoy in the fourth. Jerry Grody, the Mets catcher, had walked the ball out to the mound to talk just a moment with Tug McGraw. Now he's back behind the plate. We're ready to go. The runner at first base is Ron Brand. McGraw looks down, has the sign. The left-hander looks over at Brand. Here's the pitch. Pass ball down the middle. Strike call. One ball and one strike to Maury Wills, batting right-handed against the left-hand pitcher, McGraw. The stretch and the pitch. And Wills squared around like he might bunt, and a strike was called. He let it go. And the count goes one and two. For most of these Expos Network stations, 1.45 airtime tomorrow for our pregame show. We'll be on the air at 10 after 2 on Friday from Chicago, and then 1.55 on Saturday and Sunday. Here's a little bouncer out in front of the mound. Up with it is McGraw. He goes to first base to get Wills as the runner, Brand, moves down to second. Samori grounds out to the pitcher. Gary Sutherland now the batter. 0 for 3 today. The Expos second baseman, right hand hitter. Mets about hit the Expos 10 to 5 today. have 
driven in the three Expos runs on two of them. First pitch is a strike called on the batter, Gary Sutherland. Here is the attendance for today. First of all, the pitch is down low and inside, blocked by Grody behind the plate. He's down in the dirt. Bran holds on at second as Grody kept the ball out in front of him. One ball and one strike. One out, and Ron Brand, the runner in second. Expos with a chance to score here. Total attendance, 14,174. The total paid, 13,827. So, over 14,000 here on this second day. Gives the runner a look in the pitch. Swung on and foul back into the stands. The youngster over here had a chance to make a fine catch. Popped out of his hands. He'll be charged with an error. One of his buddies down there in front of him got the ball. Boy, the kids really scramble for the baseball. Take home a prized possession when they leave the ballpark. McGraw's pitch. Curveball swung on, and this one's fouled. Same spot, just about. And you know it's a great thrill for the youngster to come out to the ballpark and get a baseball like that. He can go back and tell all his friends. He said, boy, look at this. He said, this ball was pitched by Tug McGraw and was hit off the bat of Gary Sutherland or whatever the case may be. fun to come out to the ballpark and we hope you'll be out at Jerry Park. Here's a swing and a foul tip. One ball and two strikes to count on Gary Sutherland. Top of the seventh with one out. Ron Brand is the runner at second. Most of the infield now in the shadows here. The outfielders still playing in the bright sun. Cool day in New York, but a lot of sunshine. Here's another foul coming back under it. So Gary stays alive at the plate, a ball and two strikes. Rusty Stop, uh, Bob Bailey, Don Hahn, Jose LaBoy the hits here. The boys got two. Here's a foul over to the right. Uh, the boy has one hit. Bob Bailey has two this afternoon. Dave, uh, while uh, Gary Sutherland keeps wasting all these pitches, we might remind everyone that they'll start selling tickets for Monday's game Monday at noon. And for all games this year, Monday at noon at Jerry Park. Box office at Jerry Park at noon on Monday. Here's McGraw's next offering, and he's down low with it. Two balls and two strikes. Happy to have you aboard for this broadcast again this afternoon. Hope you'll be with us tomorrow and every day that the Expos play. Pitch is high. So now McGraw has a full count to gather Gary Sutherland. Three balls and two strikes. ready. Here's the pitch. And a strike is called. Gary started to make his move toward first base. He thought he'd drawn the walk. But strike three is called by the plate umpire Stan Landis. That'll bring Rusty Staub to the plate. Two down now. Brand still the runner at second base. Let's see for Tug McGraw strikeout number four. I'll double check that for you. One, two, three, four, five, make it six. We weren't off by too much, were we? Six strikeouts for McGraw. Stop, left-hand hitter. Let's the first one go. It's low for a ball. Rusty is one for three, doubled in the first. Popped up to the first baseman in the second and lined out to Crane Bull in the fifth. Hit the ball very well, but into the glove of first baseman Ed Cranepool. Fastball hit the outside corner about bell high. 
strike is called. One ball to one strike. Rusty doesn't quite believe that that was a strike. Two down. Brand leads off second. McGraw with a quick look at the runner and the pitch is a high curveball that Staub has to duck out of the way of. The count is two and one. For Rusty, he hit his double to left center. Here's the pitch and strike ball right above the knees on the outside corner. Two and two. Saab waiting. McGraw taking a lot of time. Now he deals. Fastball swung on and lifted high into the air. Second baseman back on the edge of the grass. Now steps onto the dirt. Boswell pulls it down. And that's it for the Expos here in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors in one left. And the score after six and a half, New York seven, Montreal three. Repeating that ticket information for you, we've just been informed by the Expo office in Montreal that the Jerry Park ticket office will open at noon on Monday and remain open all season long. So anyone wishing to buy tickets need only drop up to Jerry Park from noon on Monday on. A reminder, too, that season tickets will be available for sale even after the St. Louis series. The Expos beat the St. Louis Cardinals at Jerry Park on Monday afternoon in the big curtain raiser in Montreal. Should be a great day for fans everywhere in the northeastern United States and Canada to take in the first Major League ball game ever outside the United States. You know, my blood just runs cold with goose pimples. When I think of the great names in baseball who will be appearing at Jerry Park this year. Imagine being able to see Willie Mays, Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, all those great stars. Now into the bottom half of the seventh inning. The New York Mets are leading the Expos by the score of seven to three. The Expos have a new man on the hill, Jerry Robertson, a right-hander. Back now to Dave Van Horn. All right, Jerry Robertson comes on, and Mike Wagner is through. Center right hander. Let's the first one go. It's a fastball. Strike one call. Well, Jerry worked yesterday for an inning and a third. Didn't give up any runs. Two hits. The second strike in there. The count 0 and 2 on the batter, Ed Cranepool. He'll be followed by Jerry Grody and Ken Harrelson. Bud Harrelson. Here's a bouncer over the head of Robertson, picked up by Sutherland. Quick throw is not in time. Jerry Grody. Grody is two for three. Singled in the first, doubled in the third, struck out in the fifth. Right hand hitter swings on the first pitch and parks it foul off to the right. scored four runs in the first inning. The Expos came back with three in the second. And then the Mets added single runs in the third, fourth, and sixth. They lead seven to three. Here's a swing and a bouncing ball foul of the first baseline. Let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. 
Now back to Expo Baseball. All right, Jerry Grody ready now. 0-2 the count. Robertson delivers, and it's fouled at the plate. The count remains. No balls and two strikes. Bateman out in front of the plate called for the ball, and the plate umpire, Stan Landy, is taking a look at it. First base umpire is Bill Williams, second base Nick Colossi, third base Tom Gorman. Robertson now getting ready, looks down with a sign. Winds it up, fires, fastball high inside. One ball and two strikes to Grody. Robertson yesterday pitched in his very first Major League game. He's got a good fastball and a fairly effective curveball. Grody fouls one off to the left side of the plate. Into the dirt. One and two, the count. Tulsa won the Pacific Coast League pennant last year, and Robertson played a key role, appearing in 53 games, 52 of them as a relief pitcher. He won four and lost two and had a fine strikeout record. He struck out 72 in 78 innings last year with Tulsa. Jerry Robertson on the hill for the Expos right now. Pitches down low, and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Mike Wagner worked five innings, gave up seven hits, two runs, both earned, and one home run. Pitch is swung on, fly ball, right field. Staub down with the glasses, parks himself under this one, fires to first base, but Crane pull is back. Grody is out of there, one away. On the fly ball, a rusty stop. Here is Bud Harrelson. One for three. Struck out in the first inning. Got a base hit in the third. Went down swinging in the fifth. The runner at first base is Ed Cranepool now with one down. Harrelson's a left-hand hitter. Doug McGraw's in the on-deck circle. Robertson's pitch is high. Ball one. drawn in. Robertson's the fourth Expo pitcher to work today. He's wide with his next offering for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Bill Stoneman started the game, won a third of an inning, gave up three hits, and uh, the Mets scored four runs. Steve Shea worked two-thirds of an inning, didn't give up anything, struck out one. Mike Wagner worked five. And now Jerry Robertson. Robertson fired again and missed the target, and he's behind 3-0 and now. The fastball is wide, ball four. Harrelson draws a walk. Cranepool moves down to second, and the batter will be the pitcher, Tug McGraw, who is 0 for 2. Hit into a fielder's choice in the third, struck out in the fifth. Tug McGraw batting right. left, but always bats right. Curve ball taken by McGraw. Low ball one. Bateman watching. Cocked his arm. Great ball, the lead runner at second base. Harrelson is on at first. Only one out. Infield a double play depth. Bailey charging with the pitch, and it's ripped foul into the dugout. And boy, I'll bet that scattered some Mets down to our right. It's a 
bad place to be uh, when a foul ball gets fired in there like that one was. Here's Robertson's pitch. Bunted high in the air, caught by Robertson, and he has no other play as both runners got back. McGraw pops out to Robertson attempting to bunt. So that's two away and a big out, and the batter will be Tommy Agee. The leadoff batter, who has gone 0 for 4 today. Grounded out twice, flied out to stop twice. Tommy Agee, a right-hand hitter. Two down, two aboard. Here's Robertson's fastball high, ball one. Met seven. Expos three. We've been out hit here today, 11 to 5 so far. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Here's the breaking ball right down the pipe. Strike call. Even the count at one and one. He played straight away in the outfield. Here's Robertson's offering. It's low and outside. Two balls and one strike. Tommy Lee A.G. at the plate. Popular Met player. Here's a base hit out in the left field on the ground. is hurt. A.G. gets an RBI single to left. Cranepool scored run number eight and Harrelson is out at third and uh, apparently will be okay. He was just shaking up a little bit. One run, two hits, no errors in the field and a man left. The score now after seven innings, the Mets eight, and the Expos three. Well, since he came on to pitch in the uh, second inning, Doug McGraw has been real mean with Montreal Expos. Uh, the Expos have managed in this ballgame so far only five hits. Rusty Staub had a double. Bob Bailey is their leading hitter with two hits, a single and a double. Don Hahn had a single, knocking in two runs. And Coco LaVoy had a single. And that's all the noise the Expos have made with their bats in this game so far. But uh, Doug McGraw is uh, pitching extremely strong relief ball for the Mets this afternoon. Left-hand uh, pitcher and uh, getting a real good workout, too, against the Expo batters, uh, who showed yesterday to the Mets, to everyone, that they could swing the big lumber. But they're not swinging it that well against Mr. McGraw. He, got, he has them pretty well handcuffed. Coming in to uh, lead off the eighth inning for the Montreal Expos will be left fielder Mac Jones. And coming in for the play-by-play -play broadcast of the eighth and ninth inning, Dave Van Horn. All right, Mac Jones. He'll be followed by Bob Bailey and John Bateman. Mac is 0 for 3. The Mets 8. The Expos 3. We're in the 8. Pitch low. Ball 1. Mac popped up to the shortstop Harrelson in the first. Grounded out to Harrelson in the third. And grounded out to Boswell, the second baseman, in the fifth. Pitch is high for ball 2. Two balls and no strikes. To Mac Jones. Expos left fielder, number nine. Powerful hitter. Took a strike just then, two and one. Look at the
of the activity in that Oakland game. Here's the bounder going to the right side, and it is by Boswell, the second baseman. He can't get to it out into right center field. A base hit for Mac Jones. That's the third hit given up by McGraw, who's really done an outstanding job. He gave up a hit to LeBoy in the fourth, one to Bailey in the sixth, and now a single to Jones here in the eighth. And the batter will be Bob Bailey. Bailey, two for three. I'm going to say no score. White Sox and Oakland in the bottom half of the first inning at Oakland. They are just underway out there on the West Coast. Fastball, ripped foul, loops back under the broadcast booth here at Shea Stadium. Strike one. out in the third, doubled in the sixth. Nobody out here. Jones leading off first. The pitch low and inside. One ball, one strike to Bob Bailey. Mac Jones has good speed on the bases. So maybe Bob Bailey can move him around. Stadium. I guess they're maybe they're the first 
Western Division team in Duche. I guess that's what they mean. But of course, the Mets are in the Eastern Division. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swung on and a base hit down the left field line. Could be for extra bases. Mac Jones is in to score. And John Bateman is digging for third and in with a stand up double at second is Jose LeBoy and an RBI for Jose. LeBoy doubles down the left field line. Scoring Mac Jones with the fourth Expo run. John Bateman taking third. Is on at first, still only one out. That brings manager Gil Hodges out to the mound to talk to McGraw, and it looks like uh, that'll be it for Tug. So we're going to get a new pitcher here for the New York Mets. Russ? Can't make out uh, who it is. Uh, there hasn't been too much activity uh, in that bullpen. So it's pretty hard to make out. We'll
set a single game met strikeout record last year. His fastball is inside. One ball, two strikes. He struck out 14 against Cincinnati Reds on May 14th, and he struck out 10 or more in four of 18 starts. Dave, look the way they have uh, the outfield shifted around on Mota, a right-hand hitter. He shifted, they shifted over to the right. Yeah, he's an opposite field hitter. Pitch is high, just about cut by Grody. Is Ryan uncorked one? Nolan Ryan. Runners at second and third with one out. Here in the top of the eighth, one run is in in the inning. Jones scored on the boys' double. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss at that fastball. So Nolan Ryan comes on and struck out Manny Mota. Coming into bat in the number nine position is Floyd Wicker. making his first appearance. Pinch hitter, Floyd Wicker. Left hand hitter. They're straight away in the outfield for Wicker. Ryan hit the outside corner with the fastball, strike one. bad in the major leagues. He was in five games with St. Louis last year. Swing and a miss, strike two. Well, the fans here at Shea are all charged up, getting a chance to see Nolan Ryan, this fastballing strikeout artist of the New York Mets. Runners lead. Ryan rocks into motion now, delivers to Wicker. It's high. One ball and two strikes. series winds up tomorrow. We expect Larry Jaster to go against Gary Gentry. Righty and a lefty. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Ryan comes on to strike out two and end the inning. Gets a nice ovation. One run, three hits, no errors, and two left. The score after seven and a half, New York eight, Montreal four. We've got a new pitcher for the Expos, left fielder Dan McGinn. Dan worked in yesterday's ball game and managed to hit that home run over the right field fence, surprising everyone and himself. It was McGinn's first major league hit, and what a hit it was, a home run. The first man he'll face in the Mets batting order is right fielder Rod Gasper right-hand hitter against the left-handed servings of Dan McGinn. We have a few other changes in the lineup, defensive changes. Uh, Dave, were you able to pick them up? Now we'll get them here in just a second for you. Get caught up. Here as we move to the bottom of the eighth, we'll get Rod Gaspar. Boswell and Jones will follow. Floyd Wicker will be playing center field for the Expos in place of Don Hahn. Here's the first pitch to Gaspar. And it's down low. Ball one. Next offering. Dan McGinn, who's come on now, this left-hander, six foot, 200 pounds. Fifth Expo pitcher. McGinn fires and misses again. So he gets behind on Gaspar, 3-0. and Gaspar batting right hand now against the left-hander, McGinn. 
outfield, playing him straight. Low and inside. Ball four. So Gaspar draws a walk here to start the eighth off for the Mets. That'll bring Ken Boswell to the plate. worked one inning. Gave up one run, two hits, walked one. Boswell, left-hand hitter. Hit a home run in the fourth. Bunch out in front of the plate, picked up by McGinn. The play will be to first base. Covering was Gary Sutherland. McGinn had to wait just fraction of a second for Sutherland to get over there, but had plenty of time to make the play as the runner, Gaspar, moves down to second. Leon Jones will be the batter. He's one for three, has driven in two runs today, with a base hit in the first, hit into a double play in the second, flied out in the fourth, hit a sacrifice fly in the sixth. One out and a runner at second. four Mets lead. They've got a chance here to do something with one down and Gaspar at second base. McGinn delivers. There's a bouncing ball to third baseman LaBoy and it gets by him off his glove. Gaspar holds on at second. on the air is Cleon Jones. That brings Ed Charles to the plate now with runners at first and second. First error of the afternoon, first expose error. They didn't have any yesterday. McGinn is low and inside with his first pitch to Jones, uh, to Charles. The runner at second. Jones at first. The pitch to Charles inside, down low, blocked by Bateman. Two balls and no strikes. Only one out here in the bottom of the eighth. The stretch and the pitch. Swung on, loop foul over to the right side. We get a new ball put in play. That Philadelphia-Chicago game is almost over. Chicago leading the Phillies 11-2. The Phillies are batting in the ninth. Bill Hans has gone all the way for Chicago. For Philadelphia, Wilson on the mound right now. The pitch, check swing and a strike call on Ed Charles. Two balls and two strikes. Again, tomorrow, Gary Gentry will be pitching for the Mets, and it'll be either Jaster or Morton for the Expos. Here's the pitch. And a throw to third base as the runner goes. He's safe. Gaspar sliding in under the throw from John Bateman, and Bateman walking up toward third base, I guess, didn't think a great deal of that. John thought he had his man. As Gaspar stole third. Leon Jones held on to first. Well, let's see. For the Mets, that'd be... Uh, there's a throw down to second as Jones broke for the plate. The ball got away from Sutherland. The run scores, and they have Jones caught down in a rundown. Wills to Bailey to Sutherland, and he's tagged for the out. Run scores. Gaspar scores run number nine. And they get uh, Jones in the rundown to the strikeout. It scored two to six to three to four. One run, no hits, an error, none left. Score at 
the end of eight, New York nine, Montreal four. Laurie Will stepping in. And right after this first pitch, we'll take that station break. Ryan gets set to deliver. The first one high, ball one. Ten seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. All right, Ryan ready again to Wills. He's high and outside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Ryan deals the fastball. High again to Maury. Against Ryan, Wills again, batting left hand. And there's ball four. Maury Wills draws the walk, so now we we'll get some action on the base pass, maybe, with Maury on at first. And the batter will be Gary Sutherland. And Rusty Staub steps into the, uh, the on-deck circle. Sutherland, right-hand hitter, 0 for 4. 9 to 4, Mets lead the Expos. A look at Wills. Here's the pitch, low outside, ball 1. Well, fans have their eyes glued on. Ryan's pitch to Sutherland. Swung on, a bounder goes to second baseman, flips to second for one, back to first, double play. Oswell to Harrelson, the grain pool. Two down, and the batter, Rusty Staub.
double play, but then Dobbs home run, and now a walk to Jones. Brings Bob Bailey to the plate. He fouls one back. Strike one. Don't forget, Russ will have the scoreboard right after the game. Look at the afternoon games that are underway and the schedule of games to be played tonight. Mac Jones, the runner at first. Ryan is ready. Here it comes. Curveball swung on and a bounder. Left field through the hole. Base hit. Jones will have to hold up at second base as Cleon Jones came up with the ball, but Bob Bailey keeps things alive here for the Expos with a base hit to left. That is Bailey's third hit of the afternoon. Second hit off Ryan, and it brings John Bateman to the plate. And they had covered up the pitching mounds in the New York bullpen, they're going to uncover him right now as we get some action. A swing and a foul behind the plate. Strike one. Bateman took a good cut. Nolan Ryan getting himself in a little trouble here with two outs in the ninth. Since he's had two outs, giving up a home run, a walk, and a base hit. I wish we could have reversed the order. Five. Mets lead the Expos. And the Expos trying to get a ninth inning rally going here. Pitch swung on drive. Center field going back for it is A.G. Zender it and has it for the final out of the ball game. Well, that's it. One run. Two hits. No errors and two left in the ninth inning for the Expos. The final score the New York Mets 9, the Montreal Expos 5. We'll be back with a wrap-up in one minute. Hello, this is Lucille Ball. Remember all the cowboy movies you've seen where the good guys wore white hats and bad guys wore black? It was easy then to tell the villains and the heroes apart. But in real life, it's not so easy. Why, for example, do the cells or organs in one body work well while in another they cause serious problems? Why does one baby come into the world with a strong body and sound mind while another is born handicapped, a victim of birth defects? These vital questions are the focal point of the March of Dimes fight against birth defects. And these questions must be answered because 250,000 children in this country alone are born every year with birth defects. The March of Dimes programs of medical care, scientific research, and public education are hard at work. But your help is needed, too, so please be generous. Give to the March of Dimes. And now back to Expo Baseball. Well, the Expos came up with a first yesterday, their first victory of the year in their first game. They came up with a first this afternoon, their first defeat, and of course, for the New York Mets, it was their first win. Here again, Dave Van Horn. All right, Russ, the totals on the game for the New York Mets, nine runs, 12 hits and no errors. For the Expos, five runs, 10 hits, 